seven sixty nine sixty three. Now here's Phil Olson and Matt Jones. Time to get the week started. Good morning. Welcome. It's halftime. ESPN Arkansas and hit that line.com. I'm Phil Elson with Matt Jones. C unit Christian Johnston producing today. Got you for the next three hours. Cloudy overcast day. Gonna have some storms later on tonight. And get to watch second half of the women's final four get decided later today. And we'll get back to Arkansas baseball tomorrow. Got the men's final four going on this weekend. And it is uh this will be an April Fool's free zone. Uh, Matt Jones, we joke enough, you know, we, we joke enough. We have, a, we have enough fun to, to not have to try to uh, trick people into thinking it. that anything that we say is going to be fake today. I think everything will be 100% honest, truthful, no jokes whatsoever for the next three hours, complete seriousness. Well, it's a good thing, Phil, that uh, I don't have as much money as you do because I would have lost it all this weekend. Uh, I think the only pick I had right on uh, my Elite Eight was UConn. Uh, I, I definitely uh, – it, it was great. Great basketball. It was fun to watch. You got the Cinderella NC State doing their thing. Was that 2011 UConn team? Is that the team that won five in a row and, and then won the national title? I still don't know how they've done it, Phil. Like, if you, I've, watched, I've watched them play three times in this tournament, and you're just like, how? They can't figure it out. It's uh, the two DJs are, are getting it done for, for them, but it's it kind of the beauty – kind of the the lore, kind of the the part of this tournament that what makes it so special is a team like NC State making a run like this. Well, I mean, you could even go to the idea of, of an Alabama, you know, never making it to the Final Four, and here they are for the first time. Regardless of what you think about Alabama athletics or the basketball team or Nate Oates, um, first-timer right there, you know, and Purdue. Sears. Oh, my dude, six in a row from the three-point. I, di- I didn't think he could do it in practice. You know, I didn't think he could make six in a row. He made six in a row. Uh, three-pointers in game action. It was sick. Well, as far as NC State's concerned, um, everybody's going to have to use all their fouls against Zach Eady. How many fouls did he draw yesterday? 30 free throws, I think, or something <laughs> like 20-something fouls they call against him. Yeah, they they get a – he wears he wears you down. That was the thing. Uh, they're down seven early, and then just in that, that second half, you they just keep feeding to him, and you just – you get tired. You wore down, and he just – he keeps getting his shot off. Well, it keeps getting his shot off and keeps getting to the foul line. Great, for, but Barry, he's a much, much improved free throw shooter. Great stroke. He's going to be a. I don't know how it all works anymore, Phil. As far as is he the number one overall pick in the draft because because of his size. Um, you you look around at guards, you look at who you take, but he's a top five pick for sure. Well, he's just tough to he's tough to defend. <laughs> Absolutely tough to. De- how about how about the two stars being on display the way that they were yesterday? You know, so much will go to the so the supporting cast, but it was pretty much all Zach Eady and Dalton Connect uh, in yesterday's ball game. Connect scoring 37 of Tennessee's 66, and then Eady puts up 40 of Purdue's 72. Um, yeah, can they handle them? But then you get a game tonight. Well, and there's two really great games tonight with women's basketball, but. All the talk will be on LSU and Iowa, which has that bird magic feeling, you know, with Angel Reese and and with Caitlin Clark. Um, That's the first of the two games later today, and then UConn and and Southern California battle. With UConn getting a chance to make it back, it's been a while since they've been in the Final Four. Of course, LSU beat Iowa for the national title last night. So, you know, the thing about magic and bird, you know, that was a game that – Last year, you mean? Or well, I'm saying Magic Bird. They played for a national title, but didn't play in college again after that. I mean, it was they played all those years in the NBA against each other, and it was just that one college game that that uh, really was the impetus of, I guess, the resurgence of the NBA and maybe even some of the growth of the NCAA tournament. And and it's kind of cool to to think of the idea of. Of, uh, of of LSU and Iowa, Clark versus Reese and all the other supporting cast there for LSU, which I know better, uh, get a chance to do it the very next year with one of the teams cutting down the nets but still needing to win a couple other games to win a national title. So I think that should be 
That should be great television, too. You know, 6 o'clock, it's ESPN, LSU versus Iowa, and then two hours later, it'll be UConn in Southern California. In- oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say NC State men's and women's team, Phil, uh, that they both made the Final Four. You know the last team, which obviously you know this answer, you know the last team to win the same year, men's and women's uh, NCAA tournament? UConn. You got it. Yep. Yeah. You had a team in D2 pull it off. Um, I was the men's and up, women's they both won, yeah. Yeah, this year Minnesota State uh, over the weekend beat who was it? Nova Southeastern for the men's championship. They'd beaten Texas Women's University for the women's championship. So, yeah, you got an instance of one of those te- of of a team actually pulling it off already this year. The the craziest stat I heard. I know we talked about Long Long Beach State coach when the tournament started about how it was just he was a lame duck going in. So NC State's coach wasn't going to be back. He triggered a clause mm-hmm. when they won the ACC tournament, a two-year extension uh, for, for for you know. So what are you going to do now, huh? Well, he, for for all of the idea of that the you know, that, that the upsets and those sort of things really just happened in the first couple of the weeks, and I think it was Greg Sankey. I don't think he's the only one trying to push this, but he was the loudest in the room about eliminating any automatic bid uh, to if you win a conference championship. I guess in that case, uh, NC State wouldn't have made it. Get out of here. Needed, they needed to win the ACC you, championship in order to get where they are, or re- really just even to get to the, to, the, to the first round of the NCAA tournament, never mind the Final Four. That is case in point right there of, of why you wouldn't be eliminating – automatic bids for a conference tournament you can't what, what's greg sankey what's his role what's what's his commissioner title of the sec and that's and that's the type of garbage he's gonna say i mean that's you can't be the commissioner of the sec and say something like that and be taken seriously i mean that's that's like a, he's looking for clicks or trying to say something else because you win your conference tournament obviously you're it's an automatic bid into the ncaa tournament. why are you trying to take that away i think he's advocate honestly i think anytime that a commissioner says this is what might be better for the sport or for the tournament, it, it just has more to do with it's better for that commissioner. For the SEC. League. Yeah. Just getting more teams in, more money to the league from tournament counters. It's it that's all that's about is is what I see. But then and now you got, I mean, got look, there's in. all this other evidence. Yeah, you got one in. Sure. Alabama gets in. I mean, that doesn't mean I'm gonna be pulling for Alabama because they're an SEC school. I really can't I can't go in that direction. Has Purdue not had the easiest road to the Final Four you'll ever see? I mean, it's just like they're not I, – I mean, they haven't really played hardly anybody worth – I mean, Tennessee was their toughest – Gonzaga, they overshot. I mean, the, Gonzaga, that was their ceiling. You you know how you talk about what teams can make it where they can go. Uh, Gonzaga, that was their ceiling. I mean, they, they didn't put up a fight at all. See, Purdue beat Grambling, Utah State. Uh – Gonzaga and Tennessee. I mean, I think Tennessee's pretty Tennessee's good a real team. That's that they had no help. You you brought it up the first that Dalton Connect had he didn't get any help. Uh Ziegler's a stud. He couldn't shoot the ball very well. I think he was three of twelve shooting. And there was nothing a dude could do against Zach Eady. He he was pressing. They they start pressing. And here's what Zach Eady, here's his biggest attribute. He plays defense without fouling, Phil, because you think you, you're you're taught, and and what does Coach must do when we play Duke? Let's get Filipowski in foul trouble. What when we play a big? Let's get him. They're trying to get him in foul trouble, and he's he's contesting shots without without fouling. There's nothing you can do. You got to keep attacking. You got to know that he might block two shots in a row, three shots in a row. You got to jump into him and try to get him to call a foul, and and they don't. He plays defense without fouling. It's it's pretty fun to watch. Some people think that they're kind of surprised that he doesn't ever get called for fouls just because of how physical he does play, and and you know the well, opponents just... kind of have to answer because of you know they've got to they've got to they have to play a little more uh, aggressive than you normally would just to try to get the just to try to get position against somebody that size is nearly impossible. You got to try to go over the top of them. You got to try to jump into them. Everybody's uh, when they get around him, they jump away from the basket. They they fade away. They go off to the side. They avoid the contact. If you're going to have any chance to beat Purdue, you got to get Zach Eady in foul trouble. Well, lots of basketball talk. It was a go throughout the show today. Of course, lots of baseball talk too because Arkansas baseball finished a sweep of LSU for the fifth time ever on Saturday. And the team is red hot with 17 straight home wins. 
23 wins in 26 games for the year and one of two SEC teams that are 8-1 and one in the league. So, yeah, lots to talk about. The number one baseball team in the country as well. And uh, some major league talk because you got the first few games of the season going on. My Pirates find a way to be 4-0. I shouldn't, I shouldn't even be allowed to call them my right now because I've given them up. But I will also say let's talk in about a month and a half and see what's going on as far as that's concerned. Nice to win your first four, but I would be surprised if they uh, win their next four as well. Uh, we will be talking throughout halftime today with uh, a lot of callers and texters. The McClarty Daniel Hotline is open for you right now at 877-377-6963. Uh, just one guest today, just one, and it is Mike Irwin from Pig Trail Nation. That'll be in about an hour. Halftime is brought to you by Crabtree RV Center. That's the dealership that served you in the River Valley and Northwest Arkansas for over 70 years. They're at the junction of I-40 and I-49, right beside the Cracker Barrel in Alma. Making your plans for trips over the next few months, Crabtree RV Center will make sure your family gets the best experience. They'll help you choose the right RV for your adventures. Got a problem with the vehicle during uh, while you're uh, while you own it, the service and parts department is on site. They've got everything you need in between at Crabtree RV Center, CrabtreeRV.com for more information. Stay with us. There'll be a lot more halftime in just a moment. We'd like our program to reflect our state, the great state of Arkansas. Loyal, tough, hardworking. One of our goals every year is to make the state of Arkansas proud of the football team. In my office is a sign that says you're not coming to play for the University of Arkansas. You're coming to play for the state of Arkansas. Listen to every Razorback football game this season right here on ESPN 95.3 and hitthatline.com. The best Tex-Mex and even better service is at Joe's Grill and Cantina in Fort Smith. Every Friday is Fajita Friday, featuring their charbroiled steak and chicken. It's tender, full of flavor, and comes with all the fixing. Saturdays are for endless enchiladas with Joe's homemade enchilada sauce and all the beef, chicken, or cheese enchiladas you can eat. Joe's Grill and Cantina, great Tex-Mex, even better service. 3400 South 74th Street, across from Harps. There's more to a tractor than just horsepower. A tractor also needs weight to get that horsepower to the ground. With TYM, a heavier tractor comes standard. Many of the TYM models weigh more for the horsepower than comparable tractors from the big names. And tractors that weigh more, do more. See Bush Tractor at their new location at 6100 South Zero in Fort Smith. Or log on to bushtractor.com to see how they can upgrade your productivity. Arkansas Fuel Injection in Fort Smith has been providing quality work for all new and rebuilt diesel pumps and injectors for over 25 years. They are a certified diesel shop with a team of quality technicians that ensure the highest quality worksmanship and warranties all their work. They are open Monday through Friday 8 to 5 and has emergency service available 24 hours a day. For all your diesel pump, fuel injection and parts need, stop by Arkansas Fuel Injection, 6300 South 29th Street, Fort Smith. Call them today at 1-800-817-7709. Arkansas fuel injection. Hello, this is Sebastian County Assessor Zach Johnson here to remind you to assess your personal property by May 31st to avoid late penalty. You can do this in person at one of our three locations, over the phone, or online by going to www.countyservice.net. I would also like to remind any current homeowners or individuals buying their homes on contract to contact our office and check on your eligibility for the Homestead Tax Credit. Contact us today to see if you qualify. The Homestead Tax Credit can save you up to $425 off of your tax bill. This ad sponsored by Sebastian County Assessor and paid for by Amendment 7. When you need legal help, turn to the law offices of Craig L. Cook. With over 40 years combined experience, the Cook Law Team works for you. If you've been injured in an auto accident, hurt on the job, a victim of nursing home negligence, or need help with bankruptcy, social security, wills, trusts, estates, or family law issues, Craig Cook will go to work for you. Call us today, 479-783-8000. The law offices of Craig L. Cook with locations in Arkansas and Oklahoma. We work for working people. What shall we do with the broke propeller? What shall we do with the broke propeller? Don't look at me, I was him driving. Thank you, you're not helping. I don't even know why you bought this boat. You told me that you loved this boat. That was before you wrecked the boat. Well, now you've made it awkward. Accidents don't just happen in sea shanties, so Progressive Boat Insurance has you covered. Take as little as four minutes to see what you can save at Progressive.com. 
Progressive Cash and Insurance Company and Affiliates. Coverage subject to policy terms and not available for all votes or in all situations. Will your bracket be better than Matt Jones, Derek Ruskin, and the rest of the ESPN Arkansas team? Then prove it. Sign up for the HitThatLine.com Bracket Challenge presented by On The Mark Sports Bar and Grill in Fayetteville, 810 Billiards and Bowling in Fort Smith, and Shelter Insurance Agent Chris Dooley. Registration is easy. Just find the contest on HitThatLine.com. The HitThatLine.com Bracket Challenge is also brought to you in part by Walk On Sports Bistro, Century Bank of the Ozarks, Cafe Con Chisme, Links at Chaffee Crossing, and Foghorn's Wings. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95 <laughs> Feeling sick at the sight of his computer, he dodges his way through the swans and computers, whips off his tie, hands it to a homeless man, sleeping in the corner of a metro bus stand, he screams, I'm not going to work today, going to count the minutes at the train, it's not late, you sit on the grass, put the pyramids out of coke cans. Find halftime on 99.5 in Northwest Arkansas, 95.3 in Fort Smith and the River Valley, 96.3 in Hot Springs and Central Arkansas, 104.3 in Harrison and Mountain Home, and everywhere on HitThatLine.com. Join the conversation. Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now back to the hosts. Here's Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Here's the pitch. White swings, hard ground ball, base hit down the third baseline, and Edmondson's off to the races. He's on his way to third. Larson in the left field corner has trouble with it. They're going to try to score Edmondson. He's on his way home. The Hogs win. Head first to the plate. Hudson White wins it with an RBI double, and the Razorbacks win it 4-3. to three. That is Friday's last call in the 10th inning. Hudson White's double down the third base line, knocking Will Edmondson all the way in from first base. A thrilling victory in one of the uh, best games of the year, and then the Hogs closed down the series sweep on Saturday 7-5. to five. Uh, There's a lot of dramatic baseball over the last three days. Uh, it's good to have a day off to just kind of chill after that because they were three tight ones. Does anybody say uh, get on your horse when he's rounding I second think, base? I think there were about 11,000 people <laughs> screaming get on your horse <laughs> when that ball went down the third How base How cool line. is that, though? You know, getting a jump out after that, seeing the ball off bat, and then being on, and then just getting on your horse and going. And uh, so that's that's cool. And doing a lot of the little things you got to do to score from first base on a ball down the third base line, like that doesn't happen much. Uh, the left fielder had a little, had a slight little bobble, not enough for it to be his fault. It's Edmondson just doing some of those little things, hitting the inside corner of the base every time, uh, just probably took, I would say one and a half steps fewer than most other runners would, um, because of knowing how to run the bases and because of the way that it is taught. I'll just give an instance here before, I think this was Thursday's game. Or no, this was Wednesday. This was Wednesday at the pre-series workout. I went over to the Fowler Center after I'd finished the show at Baum Walker, and and I'm watching Dave work with some of the in, with some of the base runners. Dave does the base running. You know, Nate will handle the hitters. Um, Matt handles the pitchers. Bobby does the catchers. Dave does the infielders and all the base running. And he's working with all the position players on on a couple of things. It was going first to third but it was also the secondary lead that you're looking to get. And that's a huge portion of why Edmondson scored that ba- on that base hit. Plus, they didn't have Tommy White run on the third base line. They had the left fielder position into the gap in left center. He had a lot of ground to cover to get over there. Those were also factors in Edmondson scoring that run. Hogs did the little things. You win three games, none of them decided by more than three runs. I mean, there was a three-run win, a two-run win, and a one-run win. They, this is a team now, Matt, that does those little things. Uh, and there's still some, there's still, I think there's still room to play a little better when it comes to capitalizing on scoring opportunities because there were a few guys left on base, but they're getting those scoring opportunities and they're just so difficult to score on. 
and they become a better team defensively. And hey, a sweep over LSU, that's sweet. That that's that's really really sweet because I think that's a I actually think that's a pretty good LSU team. They're just they're just not as good as the Hogs are. Do we get to go to Baton Rouge and play a series there this year, or is it? No, I don't yeah. know when we'll play them again because um, we don't know what the schedule will look like next year. I just know that LSU is not one of the two permanent opponents. So I would assume if Arkansas does play the LSU next year, it'd be in Baton Rouge, but. We wouldn't see him again until until Hoover with the conference tournament, and and then you know who knows maybe maybe uh, maybe in a super or or in Omaha that you could definitely I think that's a better team than being two and seven in the SEC. Um, they got a couple of relievers that are pretty good. Uh, I think they got a couple of starters that are pretty good. It's just I think Arkansas really is that much better than LSU in nearly every facet. Um, but you'll see when I think the season's over, the regular season's over and LSU is at or is probably at or a little above 500. We'll look back on this three game series and say, yeah, that's a sign of really how good this baseball team can be. Got great pitching, especially relief pitching. I think it was 13 innings. Where's my notes here? Yeah, the bullpen for the week, 17 innings, only three runs. And I think the bullpen, more than the starting rotation, is the reason that Arkansas beat LSU three out of three. Um, Their bullpen is noticeably better than LSU and got deeper even this last weekend. Uh, Two pitchers to point out. One of them is Christian Fouch. Matt, Fouch is like six foot four. He's from Colorado. And you could see last year, his freshman season, that there was a lot to work with, but it might take some time to fine-tune it. He looked fine-tuned in the two games he pitched this last week, especially Friday against LSU. Six up, six down. Actually, five up, five down, and he got a double play in order to strand a runner. He's throwing 99 miles an hour. Dave says he's probably at some point going to get to 101 or maybe maybe 102 in the future. But he's throwing a pitch with, with sink. You last year his fastball was straighter. It's not straight now, and it's coming in at ninety nine or ninety eight. And the splitter that he's throwing is just ungodly. They, you don't have a chance to hit it if you do swing at it. So he was he wasn't really pitching much until this last week. Now that's another arm that you're going to see. I think every single weekend uh, until he shows reason why he shouldn't be. And the other is Hunter Dietz. I know I've talked about him a little bit on this show a few times. Dietz. He's a um, talented freshman from Florida. One of the guys that you're like, he probably shouldn't have made it to campus. A left-handed pitcher with that size and, and that velocity would get drafted, but I think Dietz wanted to come pitch at Arkansas. And he had the uh, very, I mean, it was just a slight fracture, just a little, I, th- I don't know exactly what kind of fracture it was last October, but minor surgery, didn't make his debut until this Saturday. And it's like, this will tell you what they think about him. He comes in to protect. It was a two-run lead in the eighth inning. The first batter he ever faces in a college game is Tommy White. And I think, I think White is one of the two or three best hitters, I don't think just in, in the SEC, but in the country. I mean, this, even the outs that this guy makes are usually really loud outs. Uh, Dietz walked him, but, I mean, it says a lot about what they think he can be. And he got a couple of outs. He looked good. He just got unlucky on a bad chopper that got over the head of first base from Ben McLaughlin. That's another pitcher that they're going to give the ball to, obviously, in critical moments. Otherwise, his debut wouldn't have been against a guy, a guy that's going to be a first-round pick in the draft this next July. So the and, and then we didn't even have Bybee in the weekend. Bybee pitched Tuesday against Little Rock. Three scoreless innings. Looked good. And they're, they can add him to a weekend spot as well. So... It, I mean, I'm almost too used, Matt, to at this point of the year being like, oh, man, how are they going to cover up this injury? Or, how are, you know, well, they could really use another, another two arms. Well, right now, I think they're at the position where they are leaving pitchers off of the weekend roster who can help them and they know can help them because every one of these pitchers can. Sometimes it's like, well, you got you to gotta have 27, so – we'll scroll a couple of guys down on the bottom here and know that they're not going to get into the game. No, if you're, if you're on that roster, they trust, they really trust you. And, and they, and it's the deepest, it's the deepest pitching staff I've ever seen. 
It's like a South Carolina women's basketball. They have they have stars yes, on the bench. That's okay. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like South Carolina women's basketball. That is exactly right. They lose their entire they lost their starting five and the sixth player last year from South Carolina. And they hadn't lost a game this and year. And the backups from last year have taken them to the final four. It's crazy because you said something about that last year watching them play when when Arkansas's women team played them last year. You you said you thought their backups were good enough to make the tournament and their backups <laughs> hadn't lost a game this year. <laughs> the backups did um well, I get. This. Did they make it to the? Did they make it to the final? Four? Yeah, they made it to the final four last year, but they lost to uh, they lost to Iowa. So there's one more step left for South Carolina women's basketball, as far as that's concerned, um, and a lot of steps left for Arkansas baseball. But you're, you're, they played seven weekends out of fifteen regular season weekends, so you're about halfway there. And. I don't really think there's a weakness. Who who do we got this week? Who's our non-conference game, and who is it a home series or is it a a road series? Everything's at home. Okay. Arkansas State is the opponent tomorrow night, six o'clock. Might be a little chilly. Uh, the fighting it, Darian Fords. I like the it. The fighting Joseph Pinions. Yeah, I saw that. Good for Joe, man. He's that's good. He's <laughs> they still play. they still air on on Little Rock Radio, a station that's carrying a, an ad where Pinion identifies himself as an Arkansas Razorback. I heard that yesterday, but I think he only commit when he committed to a state. I think Friday or Saturday. So it's time to time to just throw what all they need to do is throw one word into the commercial. He's just throw like, "Hi, I'm Joseph Pinion, Arkansas State basketball player." Just like that, be perfectly perfectly good for him. They could be the Fighting Dicky Nuts. He coached there too. Yeah, he right? did. It yeah, he did. That's, that could the, certainly work. The then you get old Miss Mal's on. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fighting Brian. Let's go through the whole lineage here. Um, and then Ole Miss comes in Thursday, and Ole Miss. Uh, they, I think they've been run ruled. They got they, they lost they lost to Kentucky, two out of three. No, it was three out of three. They have been run ruled in four of the last six games. And in the second game of their series with Kentucky, Ole Miss made six errors. Oh, that's in one game. Oh, yeah, that's six. exactly right. That is the perfect reaction. You can't, make, you can't make six all weekend. I mean, I don't know. What What do you get? One a game It's kind of like you're like, OK, but like six in a game. Yeah. Oh, no, man. Yeah. Well, well, there was one error made this last weekend in the Arkansas LSU series, and it was by the uh, the LSU shortstop, Michael Braswell, when Edmondson led off or it wasn't lead off one out in the 10th inning, hits a ground ball to shortstop. Um, Braswell charged it, but. It snuck under his glove, and that was the only error of the entire series. Two pitches later, Edmondson scores the game-winning run on the double by Hudson White. So this, you know, Arkansas—they were perfect in the field this last week. No errors. They uh, made a lot of made a lot of really good defensive plays. And I'll tell you one reason why this team's gotten better, um, even in the last couple of weeks. It's Peyton Stovall's return, and it's not just because of his hitting. It's because of his fielding as well. He put on a master class of playing second base this last series. Master class. Um, diving stop up the middle, perfect positioning, random, you know, double plays that he made here and there. Um, they're a lot better with Peyton Stovall at second base, and I think that was on display too. 877-377-6963 for calls and texts on the McClarty Daniel hotline. So we got some questions here, some comments on the on the text line. Uh, Drew says LSU could be in a Super or Omaha. I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, I think Luke Holman is a legitimate ace. Uh, this Griffin Herring, this left-hand reliever they've got, I think he's legit. they got to figure out the third starter because Thatcher Hurd, and if he doesn't turn things around, they've got a real issue with the third starter. Maybe they move Herring into the starting rotation. But they're not as scary as a team one through nine in the lineup that they were – before, I think there's a couple holes in that lineup. Um, but uh, they're really good hitters. They're still some of the best in the country. Travinsky, uh, Tommy White, Mac Bingham, the second baseman they've got, Milam, he's coming on. Jared Jones, the first baseman. But I think they're going to have to outslug some teams. They're not, as, they're not even close to being as good as they were last year. They're just good this year. JT doesn't feel bad for LSU. I don't think anybody here does. Gary says Fouch doesn't even look like he's trying to throw hard. Yeah, the kid's so big. It's I mean, he literally has a lightning bolt in that right arm. And Jason asks, is Tiger more effective coming out of the pen than starting? I mean, we haven't seen him pitch in relief since since to start last season. 
I like him as a starter. I know that there's some narrative that he's that he's struggling as a starter, but if I look at my numbers, I mean, his ERA is well under three. Um, I know it's over five in the SEC, but I think he showed something this last game. Maybe there were a couple of pitch calls here and there that kind of went in the hitter's favor. I mean, the pitch called by the catcher. Of course, he's got to agree with it, but his fastball command was a, was better. Uh, it wasn't throwing him to the backstop. Um, there, there's no reason to move ro- him out of the rotation right now. But <clears throat> in a few weeks, you know, if he allows three home runs and, and two more starts, then yeah, maybe there'll be a change. And you do have, you do have other pitchers like Ben Bybee or Fisher that I think they'd be comfortable giving the ball to uh, potentially as a weekend starter. But I don't think that's the case right now. And Jamie May, Matt says that Arkansas State will always be the fighting Larry Lacewells. Yeah, you know the the fighting fighting Cleo Lemons, a uh, former teammate of mine. He was a quarterback there for a little bit. Stay with he us. threw a heavy ball. He threw a heavy football. He, he threw a heavy. You know how they throw a heavy ball. He threw a heavy. He had a strong arm. I would think you wouldn't want to throw a heavy football. Don't you, you want, want to, to throw get it, it nice and light? Yeah, but but you want to get it there before the defense does. So yeah, you, yeah. I guess that does kind of come into it a little bit. So those calls and texts come in on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. We'll be back in just a moment. You can now download our new app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Listen. And- this video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned. Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Thanks for watching us here on ESPN Arkansas. Download the brand new Hit That Line Now app in the Apple and Google Play stores. ESPN Arkansas, more than just radio stations. Call or text the McClarty Daniel hotline at 877-377-6963. McClarty Daniel, a vehicle for every lifestyle. When you're looking for a new car, you want to shop for a vehicle you love with an organization you trust. You've probably heard that McCarty Daniel means making deals, but what I'm inspired by the most is that McCarty Daniel means making a difference in our community. When you buy a vehicle with McCarty Daniel, you reinvest right here in the community, in our schools, in our little leagues, in our food banks, and our people. So you're not just making a purchase, you're making a difference too. Come see us at any of our six locations in Northwest Arkansas. Tommy Craft here. When it came time for new gates and some fence repairs at my home, the fence man was my first call. The fence man does it all, from large commercial jobs to small residential repairs. Wood privacy fence, vinyl fence, commercial or residential chain link, even custom wrought iron fencing. 479-782-3936. 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available. If it involves fencing, the fence man does it. The fence man. He ain't afraid of no work. 479-782-3936. It's a dandy white perch. Big old slab. C'est bon, Sakale. One beautiful crappie. It's a paper mouth. <laughs> Some serious crappie. Nice spec. We got crappie. They might go by different names, but all prefer the same thing. Bobby Garland, America's favorite. White perch, slab, Sakale, paper mouth, crappie, spec, crappie baits. I call it dinner. The tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up to the national championship. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile device and even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. Are you looking for the best Razorbacks insight and analysis? Hell yes. How about listening to an Arkansas football legend? Matt Jones. All he does is make big plays. What's the voice of the Hogs have to say? Hey, what a great crowd last night. Don't forget about the Omahogs. The Hogs are going to Omaha. Matt Jones, Chuck Barrett, and Phil Elson. The best in the business. On the Hit That Line podcast network. Go to hitthatline.com or search Hit That Line wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Madonna has gone from like a virgin to like a surgeon. You can try to nip and tuck from the curse of sin, but eventually death is going to win. 
God will do major surgery on this sin-filled world. And when he does, people will try and hide their faces from him. Even plastic Christians won't be exempt. Look up Isaiah chapter 2 and see how the spiritual world renders this an immaterial world. I'm Pastor Abe from Woodland. Read about it. This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned. Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Thanks for watching us here on ESPN Arkansas. Download the brand new Hit That Line Now app in the Apple and Google Play stores. ESPN Arkansas, more than just radio stations. Call or text the McClarty Daniel hotline at 877 <laughs> Problem is all inside your head, she said to me. The answer is easy if you take it logically. I'd like to help you in your struggle to be free. There must be 50 ways to leave your lover. You're listening to Halftime with Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Want to jump in the conversation? Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel hotline, 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Looking at the box score from the Tennessee-Purdue game, 16 fouls called um, by defenders that are defending Zach Eady. He committed only one foul in 39 and a half minutes. That's something else. He led the he leads the nation in free throw attempts. Uh, 424 free throw attempts over 37 games for Zach Eady. So he gets to the line a ton. And man, I mean, <laughs> that's that's a mind blowing number here. I mean, a differential of 15 fouls. I just have a tough time believing that somebody of that size who does play physically on both ends only picks up one foul it, while while the other team picks up 16 against him. It's going to be a, a great – I mean, well, Zach Eady's the most dominant player in, in this tournament. Uh, UConn's the most dominant team. So Donovan Klingon – uh, Klingon, Klingon, he's uh, he's a 7-2 center. He was the backup last year that would come in and play 10, 12 minutes. That's going to be a fun battle right there. That's two big-time guys, I think, that you're talking about lottery picks. I mean, those those are two guys, 7-2. You can't you can't teach height. You either got it or you don't. And and I, I tell you, you got to be touched by the hand of God to play in the NBA. You just got to be blessed, a little bit different. Your body, you're just different. Both those cats are different. I mean, that's going to be a good battle. I mean, the offense goes through Edie, though, right? I mean, he's... Absolutely. As the most dominant player in this tournament is, is Edie. No, no question about it. How about the DJs? They have a, they have a chance he's against... He's so fun to watch. What's that little Wayne song? Go, DJ. It's my DJ. They're, uh, they got two of them, man. He's, uh, I, I still think he. there's no way he gets drafted. Uh, could, could he make a living playing basketball? Absolutely. He can go overseas, uh, play basketball. There'll be a spot for him. Dude could be a right tackle or a left tackle making twenty million a year. Like this, have you? Oh my goodness! Edie averages less than two fouls per game on him. You got to attack him. No, they they attack him and they jump away. That's what I've noticed. That nobody attacks Edie. Like even if you even if you post up on him, nobody he doesn't have to jump. So you can't even if you pump fake, he's just standing there. Uh, you got to try to create the contact. You got even if you're a guard. And know that he might block it. It's 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 almost like taking a charge. Yeah, it might hurt a little bit, but you gotta you gotta do it for the team. You have to get Edie, and you can't let Edie play forty minutes. Phil, there's just he 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 does whatever he wants out there. He averages thirty two minutes a game and less than two fouls a game. I mean, I know that there's a there's a theory that officials just don't call fouls on him much. That's a thing that our friend Aaron Torres has been beating his chest about all year long and and he and the Purdue fans have been going at it for the entire season because of that 
Um, but I just, I just, I look, and I haven't watched enough Purdue basketball to 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 have an opinion on this one way or the other. It's just looking at the numbers. I there really wouldn't be many other, if any other, players who play power forward or center that would average thirty two minutes and less than two fouls a game. You just you just don't see this much, and it's because of the nature of the game and the nature of what you have to do at those positions. So I don't know. Maybe he is refereed a little bit differently, but I don't. I don't. I also don't. I don't. Um, I don't begrudge him the fouls against him because there's only one way to defend him in some cases, and that's to maul him. <laughs> in college, it's like it's like it's kind of like the Shaq treatment. <clears throat> You know, in the NBA. But he shoots free throws better. But he shoots free throws a heck of a lot better. That's right. That's exactly right. And so the, the math doesn't, like, work out for me, but I, I can't have an opinion on this one way or the other because I've, I've only watched a couple of their games, and it's been in this tournament. But I agree. I mean, he is the, um, he, he is the most unstoppable force. Uh, right outside of maybe Mark Sears' three-point shot when it's on. That was so fun to watch. Uh, you know, Clemson, they, they play to they're, – they're a lot like their, their neighbor South Carolina as far as connected. They play well. They play smart. Uh, they, they, they know who they are. They, they just didn't have an answer. I mean, it was uh, – Alabama just kept going – and you know Grant Nelson, he 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 didn't he kind of came back down to earth a little bit, but he still he still showed out. And then Sears was Sears a first team or second team All Conference? Uh, because I, Z, Ziegler was the defensive player. Those are the two best guards I thought in the in the, in the SEC. And I was kind of always Ziegler over Sears. But uh, you put a performance like that in that that's big. Time. I think he's going to have to do something like that, if not more, Phil. If if Alabama wants to beat UConn. So NC State does have Mo Diara to try to defend against ED. I think I remember he was at Mizzou uh, before transferring to NC State. And then there's Ben Middlebrooks, if he does get on the court at all, and, and DJ Burns. But 6'9 against, what is ED, 7'3", 7'4"? Burns has the width, and he's got some footwork too. I mean, that's the thing about DJ Burns that stands out. And I think I look at his spin move when he's in the post and think, well, there's – that that can also pay off with with dividends defensively, but I just I just don't know if anybody can defend uh, Zach Eady as well as as well as DJ Burns has played. Uh, Dan in Mount Ida says the exhibition game against Purdue didn't show much. Yeah, certainly didn't. Well, you know Purdue only plays six players. I, I thought Tennessee messed up by not playing Adu uh, more. He only played ten minutes. Uh, I thought that was a mistake. Uh, but Purdue, there's there's only six guys that that play that stepped on the floor. I mean, I take that back. I'm sorry. They had they had tw- they had seven guys. One guy had 12 minutes. So you had the two teams. I mean, the, we we go to the the whole narrative of Big East teams, <clears throat> you know, going three and zero or or six and zero for the first couple of weekends. The SEC apparently was down because. You had some teams struggle in the first round. Well, you had two teams in the Elite Eight. Does that mean that it was just a top-heavy league this year? Is that is that the way I'm supposed to take this? You get a team into the Final Four. You haven't had an SEC team in the Final Four for a while. So does that mean that the SEC was, 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 the good last, this, yeah. was really good this year because you got a team that didn't win the championship that's in the, uh, that's in the Final Four? I thought Tennessee and Alabama, yeah, they they were the class. South Carolina's your your you know your your regular season. You know, they overachieved. Alabama, I would think, underachieved. But then they they did win the SEC conference tournament. But but in the NCAA tournament, that was that was a joke. I thought Auburn. That was Auburn. That's that sorry, Auburn. Yeah. I thought Auburn was the third best team in the SEC, and and then they didn't really. And then Kentucky never guarded anybody all year. Uh, they they have athletes, but they they never figured out how to play defense. And then you know Florida's guards they were going to be found out. But as far as athletic ability, uh, Florida Florida has some athletes. You're not going to say it. You're not going to say it. I want to congratulate <laughs> Alabama University. No, University, University of to Alabama. That's you have to, uh, if something uh, rolls, something you have to <laughs> roll. Time. <laughs> Good sport. Hey, gotta say it. That had to hurt Charles Barkley to say. <clears throat> that really had to hurt Charles Barkley to say. Like, who would you like to make call the Hogs if and when Arkansas wins a national championship in whatever sport it is that we talk about here? 
Who, who would you like to make call the hogs? Is there anybody that stand out? We got a certain caller, I, I think, that, that a lot of our listeners might point to. I will also say, I feel like Brian roots for Arkansas baseball. I think he's selective in his dislike of various programs. So, But that would probably be the one at the top of most people's lists, at least on this station. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of friendly fire at this station. You know, most people are Razorback fans that, that hang out here. That's a good point. That's right. Um, by the way, I saw where uh, SMU has made um, Andy Enfield's hiring official. So Enfield leaving Southern California for SMU, and now USC is open. And still there's some intrigue about this video that Hunter Juracek put out last week that was recycled, at least part of it was recycled. I guess the first two-thirds was recycled with him getting on the Musk bus, Mus looking into the rearview mirror, and then Hunter's part where he's like, you're still here, is the new part, and there is, there's a lot of intrigue behind that. I'm not sure if it meant what we thought it meant when we first saw it. Um, I don't think there's been any kind of extension signed, <clears throat> and now USC is open, but I have also been told that USC might not necessarily be a job that would look for Mus specifically. If you think of the idea of the geography being one thing, admissions are a lot more difficult at USC. That might not necessarily be the place you can get seven or eight transfers to make it into school. Um, and they've, got a, they've had totally different changes in leadership and president and in athletics director. So I don't, I don't, I was I thought maybe that might fit, but for now I I'm not quite sure about it. I still think Mus is going to be the head coach at Arkansas. Uh, Matthew McConaughey to call the Hogs. Kevin Hickey says that I like that one. The Vandy Whistler to whistle the Hog call. Can't we just stick a sock in his mouth and just call it good? Scott says Peter Burns Calipari down one Dan wants Calipari to call the Hogs, but only if it's from a request from the one and only Bob Holt. I think that would work too. Um, meanwhile, we got to take a break. We'll wrap halftime up in the first hour in just a moment, so stay with us. Hi, this is Matt Jones with The Halftime Show, and I will be broadcasting live from the Party Place in Fort Smith on April 8th, or better known as Eclipse Day, from 11 to 2. Halftime will be at their new location at 7810 Rogers Avenue behind Ashley Furniture. It's going to be a Party Place celebration with fun things to do and, of course, giveaways. It's The Halftime Show at the Party Place on Monday, April 8th. The tires on your vehicle go round and round, but when they don't, go to Van Alma Tire. They have tires in their name. That's their specialty. Van Alma Tire is all about tires. They have all the name brands and private labels available for you and in stock. So when it comes to getting tires for your ride, it's worth the drive. And financing is available. Ask for details. Whatever your tire need, check out Van Alma Tires on Highway 64 between Van Buren and Alma. Ready to get you rolling on new tires at Van Alma Tire. Remodeling your bathroom? Don't let your imagination be limited by out-of-the-box shower doors or tub enclosures. Arkansas Glass & Mirror is your local source for all things glass, including plexiglass, mirrors, and shower doors since 1964. Arkansas Glass & Mirror has more selections, better prices, and the experience to help you build the shower of your dreams. They also have the only showroom in the area to help you create those dreams. Professional installation and professional service. Only at Arkansas Glass & Mirror, 1316 South Zero, Fort Smith, or online at ArkansasGlassAndMirror.com. Come get you some. 2728 Townsend Avenue is your off-road and performance center headquarters. They've got everything from lift kits, wheels, LED light bars, UTV parts and accessories, winches and tires. Need general 4x4 repair? No problem. Come get you some has one of the largest 4x4 shops in the state. They do it all, from installing a bug shield to building some of the baddest off-road machines in the country. Call them today at 782-6833. That's 782-MUD. Or check them out online at cgysoffroad.com. Come get you some. Can you explain the infield fly rule? Neither can I, but I can help you navigate a variety of legal issues from divorce to personal injury to estate planning. I'm Jackie Mock with Mock Legal Solutions, a new law firm offering affordable flat fees with payment plans available. You get an ace at the price of a minor leaguer. Now that sounds like a grand slam to me. Call Mock Legal Solutions for your free consultation. 479-769-1505. Real advice, reasonable price. 
precision overhead door. Features the finest quality materials, installation, and service for all of your overhead door needs. Fully licensed and insured with locations in Rogers and Fort Smith. Serving all of Northwest Arkansas and the River Valley. Give them a call today at 844-PBS-DOOR or online at PrecisionDoorNWA.com. Back-to-back winners of the Best of Award, Gold Best Garage Company in Northwest Arkansas, and also winners of the River Valley Precision Overhead Door. Are you an angler having trouble finding all the bait, tackle, and more for your fishing needs? Make-A-Wake Bait and Tackle, now located in Fort Smith next to Wits Marine. On North 11th Street is your place. Make-A-Wake Bait and Tackle also has the largest selection of plastics in the River Valley. Reactor Innovation, Bobby Garland, Sue, Mega Bass, and more. Check out the Dial Rod and Reels. Make-A-Wake Bait and Tackle, 803 North 11th Street in Fort Smith, 479-926-9320. Also get your rod and reels repaired. Come see us next to Wits Marine at Make-A-Wake Bait and Tackle. Do you need a oil change but don't have time to drop off your car? s j Express Lube will let you sit in your car while they do the work and it only takes about 15 minutes with no appointment needed. Prices start at $35.99 for a 20-point inspection service. s j Express Lube is open Monday through Friday 9 to 6 and Saturdays 8 till noon. You'll find them at 14818 Highway 71 South in Jenny Lynn. Check them out on Facebook too. s j Express Lube, your authorized casserole dealer in Sebastian County. They are waiting on you now. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN Welcome back into Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Studios. Crabtree RV Center in Alma, where we make your dreams come true. Back on Halftime, there is uh, breaking news coming from the world of SEC women's basketball. And I had to double check this because it's April 1st. And I I can't believe everything I see on Twitter on a regular day. Today, I'm not going to believe a damn thing I see on that godforsaken app. Um, so I did check and it is true. Tennessee has, um, they say parted ways with that's a firing of Kelly Harper, uh, who is one of their own. I mean, she won, I think it was two or three national titles playing for Pat summit and had been the coach at Tennessee for the last five years. They've made the tournament four years in a row, won at least a first round game each year, twice advancing to the sweet 16, but this year, a second round exit, and uh, that was to NC State, a team that's in the Final Four. And uh, now Tennessee is looking for a new head women's basketball coach. And this is happening late. This is late. I mean, usually this would come kind of right after the their season is over, but it's been more than a week. So, I mean, hey, if Tennessee women's basketball opens, that's a big deal. Yeah, you said they made the second round uh, of the tournament. They they uh, when's the last time Tennessee the Lady Vols have been in a Final Four? Is it, has it been a while? You know, it's because they used to be the class. It was it was them. It was La Tech. It was UConn basketball for for the women's side. Uh, now it's like South Carolina, LSU. They, they they seem to have taken over. I don't. It. I'm, I'm looking back. I don't. I don't see a Final Four for Tennessee women's hoops since 2008. That's also the last time they won a national championship. Yeah, there's a, a bunch of uh, Elite Eight losses, a couple of Sweet 16, three, three or four Sweet 16 losses. Um, you know, Holly Warlick was let go and had never missed the tournament. And uh, Kelly Harper, she never missed the tournament either. Um, the one year that they didn't make the tournament was the year there wasn't a tournament. And they've advanced at least to the second round each time, never, losing, uh, never winning um, any fewer than 20 games. So... That's huge news for Tennessee to come open. And, I mean, that's the kind of program that normally would be looking 
for one of their own, you know, one of the one of their stars uh, to come back and lead the program. Uh, so after Pat Summit, it was Coach Warlick who, for years, was was Pat's top assistant, and and then the and then the first former player to come back and coach them is Kelly Harper. So I would assume it's got to be like that. You know, Louisville Louisville men's basketball. They dig. They dug into the past, brought in Kenny Payne, a former player. That did not go so well, at all. <clears throat> it's going actually kind of okay for Tennessee. It's just they expect to be in the Final Four. Speaking of former players, John Shire, a uh, former player of Duke Blue Devils, I was surprised. You know, they they went one and one in the regular season this year, uh, and uh, that second half, you know, Duke didn't have an answer. Jamie May says, and I'd forgotten that this is the day it happened. Yeah. Keep Petrino away from motorcycles. I know a lot of people didn't believe that story when it came out that day, too. I think that was just at like the early part of Twitter, maybe two or three years after it had become a thing. All right, we're into the second hour of halftime. Mike Irwin joins in about 20 minutes. The Wave Rural Connect Shoal Creek Zone is open. Fast fiber internet, TV, and home phone available. This covers Midway, New Blaine, Scranton, Delaware, and other areas. Even if this isn't your zone, check your address. We might be available for you. Get your whole home solution. Internet, TV, and phone from a local provider. Go to signup.waveruralconnect.com or call 1-833-492-8372. Arkansas Valley Electric and Wave Rural Connect. Changing the communities we serve. Logs? Nobody wants a clog. West Arc Plumbing knows that clogs are a serious issue. They can signal that bigger problems are on the way. So contact West Arc Plumbing while the problem is small. Slow shower and sink drain, gurgling toilets and outside cleanouts making a mess? Call 479-646-5151 today. West Arc Plumbing and expert drain cleaning since 1993. They keep you flowing. If you have slow drains or high water bills, call West Arc Plumbing and expert drain cleaning service. 646-5151. We love our backyard. This year, we added an outdoor kitchen. We couldn't wait to show it off, but what happened? Mosquitoes. Basically, we did all this work for them. Instead of providing food and entertaining our guests, we became the food. We wasted all that time and money on a yard we couldn't even enjoy. Then, we called Mosquito Joe. After just the first treatment, Mosquito Joe gave us our yard back. Now, we're the favorite neighborhood hangout. Mosquito Joe makes outside fun again. Visit arkansas.mosquitojoe.com. Before you buy that next car or truck, stop by Broadway Motors in Van Buren. The best of the best for two straight years. Michael and his team offer the best prices on the best quality pre-owned vehicles in the River Valley. They invite you to stop by and check it out for yourself. Or if you prefer to check out their inventory online or even do your financing online. Michael has built his reputation as a husband, father, and owner operator since 2006. Broadway Motors, 806 Broadway in Van Buren or online at Broadway Motors. Why do people love Shamrock Liquor Warehouse? Simple. They've got it all. 70 years in business, 15,000 square feet of choices. They buy in volume so you can save. What else? How about the largest selection of well, everything? Shamrock's got it. Special orders? Shamrock's got it. Convenient drive through open six days a week? Shamrock's got it. Need a keg for your party? Shamrock's got it. Load up at Shamrock Liquor Warehouse at the corner of Midland and Riverfront Drive in Fort Smith. ESPN Arkansas weather. For today, a pretty quiet go of it, but some active weather moving in tonight into Tuesday. Some storms could contain some golf ball sized hail, isolated tornadoes, and also the chance of 60 mile per hour winds. So a few isolated showers and storms across the north today. Temperatures mid to upper 70s. Showers and storms intensify tonight. I'm meteorologist Sally Russell. This is Think Radio. The weather is brought to you by Shamrock Liquor Warehouse, 5609 Midland Boulevard, your leader in fine wines, beers, and spirits. KERX Paris Fort Smith. This is halftime coming at you from the Crabtree RV Studios on ESPN 95.3. Coming to you live from the Crabtree RV Center Studios. Broadcasting on ESPN Arkansas and streaming on hitthatline.com. We got a good one tonight. You got a team in here that's the perspective. <laughs> We're going to go get one and celebrate on somebody else's tail. 
Bill well, said you had very motivational words at halftime. It's halftime with Bill Olson and Matt Jones. From the bottom of my toes to the top of my head. Oh, Probably as frustrated as, as I've been uh, the first half. But they were one race to back. Second half, uh, very happy. And vintage Matt Jones. Here we go. Right now, let's take the field. on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Olson and Matt Jones. Welcome into hour number two, halftime, as we get into your 12 o'clock hour and the sky is getting darker and the sky is getting grayer. I'm Phil Elson, Matt Jones, and the C-Unit, Christian Johnston alongside. We'll have Mike Irwin in about 15 minutes from Pick Drone Nation. Dig a lot into this Arkansas baseball team. Thoughts on the final four and um, anything else we can kick up with the one and only Mike Irwin. <clears throat> Matt, what did you get a chance to watch over the weekend? You had... Uh, you had a lot of sports you could watch this weekend. I'd buy as mostly on uh, Arkansas baseball. A little bit of the final, a little bit of the Elite Eight. Watched a little more yesterday. Uh, what you? Wh- what was the best game you saw this weekend? The best game? Well, Man City Arsenal had a zero zero draw, and it was pretty pedestrian at times. Uh, but it's it's for you know they both got a point, so both teams are in it. And if you're playing the percentages, you don't want to lose this game because. They're both going to be favored in every game they have. There's eight games left in the regular season, uh, so you you kind of you kind of understood it. Uh, I thought that Creighton Tennessee game to 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 go on to to for the right to play Purdue uh, seventy five eighty two game that the the Vols won. I thought that was a pretty pretty good game. Uh, was surprised that Marquette didn't didn't know what they were doing. Uh, that Alabama Clemson game was good. Uh, the 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 Tide were able to get that one. Uh, and then I watched that at Aston Villa and Wolverhampton, so another soccer game. Uh, and then Liverpool, Liverpool was able to get the the lead two uh, one over Brighton. So it sounds like you watched about like <clears throat> what it 10 was different games. Well, it was it was such good timing because soccer in the morning. Uh, then and especially yesterday, Phil, the, the basketball started around one fifteen, and the, you know you got going. I I, I did want to get your thoughts. I know you didn't watch much of it, but. The games on on Thursday and Friday, and I mean, they start so late. I don't like, get it. Yeah, yeah. Why are we starting the game? The game shouldn't be getting over at eleven thirty. You know, it's it's. I ridiculous. think one of the games went past midnight on the East Coast. Like one of the games that was played in Boston went past midnight. That's that's what I mean. It's it's like, and you want to watch the games, and then you then you have the second round where one of them only started like ten minutes before the other game. It's like you, you I don't know. It was uh, it was weird. I get it. You know, marketing, money, uh, all the things, the TV ratings. But man, let's start the game an hour earlier the sweet spot to be a basketball fan is to live on the west coast but then if you do that matt you'd like be waking up at four in the morning to watch your uh, you'd have your to champions D- league yeah you'd have to dbr that stuff then yeah you know and put a little thing on the tv where you can't see the score you know you can't see anything going on it's like turn your phone on airplane mode 877-377-6963 is the mcclarty daniel hotline got a couple of all-stars on hold here and charlie gets to lead off Charlie, leadoff batters usually take a couple of pitches. Are you swinging away first, though? And Phil, you know me; I'm a patient guy, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I gotta do because I'm sure when you say all stars, I'm just gonna guess that Eddie is behind me, right? Am I am I am I am I right by that? There might be a screamer behind you somewhere, right behind you. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well. I tell you what, uh, I've been really impressed with Peyton so well. You know, uh, I think Coach uh, Van Horn even touched on it. The fact that, you know, even myself, you know, just thinking like when a guy comes back from injury, and let's be honest, it's been kind of a two-year struggle for him, right, Phil? I mean, I know. Well, maybe I'm I'm thinking wrong. I know he had the uh, the arm thing, right? Uh, the it was the it was it, it was the labrum he tore shoulder. Yeah, it was a labrum from okay. last year. And as a freshman, it was, I think he had a little, I forget what the injury was, cost him a, about a week or so, but that wasn't the issue. It was just, you know, freshman growing pains, playing a different position instead of playing at second base so Robert Moore could play second base. I think I think Stovall is just as good uh, of a second baseman, if not maybe a little better than, than Robert Moore, which is saying something because I think Robert was a really good second baseman. He's good. Yeah, Stovall <laughs> never, never gets fooled on any kind of a hop. Um, he's as steady as it gets at second base. 
Absolutely. I, I'm impressed, though, with, like, how he's doing at the plate. Uh, I, I, I didn't – you know, a lot of times I know, you know, when you're when you're out for an extended period of time, it takes some time just to kind of get your rhythm back. And for him to be – I mean, this guy may wind up – and I'm not saying he will, but it's highly possible he could lead us in home runs and bat over, like, 330. I know he's over 350 right now, whatever it is. But, I mean – the guy's that good and it, it's insane. And, you know, I think he's kind of given us, I know we had some issues and I'm also impressed with how Aloy has kind of slowed it down a little bit and uh, starting to take some uh, pitches and uh, he's playing better as well. So it's, it's coming together. It just feels like this team, I don't know, Phil, if, you know, you, you watch them all the time. You know, I, I just don't see like a true, I guess, weakness per se on this team right now. I mean, I just think Dan, uh, Dave has so many answers. And one more thing before I get off here. Matt Jones, I want to know your opinion on this. I have a problem with how people are portraying this Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark thing. I don't have an issue whatsoever with them trash talking and going at it and all of this and that. I mean, and, and her dad getting on her is different. So for me, I have no issue with it. I just wonder what your thoughts were because, I mean, if a guy does it, we're all always just passionate. So I just wonder what your thoughts were on that because I'm, I'm with it. I, lo- I love this stuff. Y'all have a good one. Good to hear from you, Charlie. Hey, as long as you're trash talking, that's part of the game. Um, you know, you, you can't get physical. You know, you can't let le- uh, put your hands on somebody. But, you know, hey, when you win the game, that's that's like a, what, what do we have, Phil? Uh, I, I forget the squad. But homie got dunked on, and they lost the championship game and weren't, was not going to go to March Madness. And he takes the ball. It's like South Carolina State. He takes the ball and throws it at the other opponent. Yeah, that was Texas Arlington against Green That's Canyon. what you can't have. Now, if, if you don't want to get dunked on, you don't want them to showboat, you don't want the confetti to fall down, then play better and win. So as far as trash talk, I mean, trash talk's part of the game. I, I, I love it. I also don't – look, I, I think part of it is not just Reese. It's the LSU team overall. I don't. I don't think they're dirty. I just. I just think they play with an edge. Uh, and like, I didn't read the article that Kim Mulkey was very upset about, not from the Washington Post, but from the L.A. Times. But if there's an idea that, you know, that that, that you're portraying it as good versus evil, which is what they were doing, but I think it was more that the opponent they were playing. I think they were playing what USC, Southern California. They were playing an L.A. team or UCLA. I think it was UCLA. Playing an LA yeah. team. It's a team out of the you know, in that reading area. Maybe that was the issue that that writer took to it. And But uh, I don't think they play dirty. I just think they play very, very confidently. Um, look, I remember watching Angel Reese block a shot from Samara Spencer a couple of years ago. And then when Sam landed on the floor, this happened at LSU, Reese just stood over her and stared at her. I don't know if she said something. She probably did. But that's also that goes along with the territory. Because I've seen Arkansas players talk some stuff back to players too. That's just that's the sport. I think it's the culture of that sport specifically, and Clark gives it right back to everybody else. I think you know with with Clark, there's just there's there's some smack talk, and that's fine. There's complaining about calls. There's being you know uh, you know you can see your eyes roll and all of that kind of stuff. But I, sometimes I do feel like women are held to a different standard than men when it comes to the way that you act on the court. I, I think college women's college basketball is the best it has been in a long time, if not ever, Phil. I mean, it's not just one team. You know, it's not just a Tennessee. It's not just a UConn where you're like, well, they're going to win it. There, it's There's there's six, seven teams that could win the championship there, this year. And and I would say that the number two now, Zach Eady might be getting a little bit of play as far as name recognition. But I think Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, those are the two most known names in basketball, in college basketball, and they're coming from the, the ladies' side. So outside of outside of Edie, it's DJ Burns. And that just happened. That just happened mm-hmm. with this tournament. And mm-hmm. it's because he's a star of this tournament. These are stars of last year's tournament that we're talking about with women's basketball that became – sort of household names across the country for college sports fans or even some fans that don't really pay much attention to college sports. They know these names. And is, does this necessarily lead to, at some point, more viewership of the WNBA when both of these players end up in that league? I don't know if, I don't know if we're there yet. You know, I mean, you got to be able to follow. You really want to follow these players to the next level, and then there's more players after that. But that's what happened with Bird and Magic. 
it leads to a better product is what I think it leads to, Phil. I think we, you, you're having ladies that are that are young girls, you know, fifth graders, eighth graders. They're watching this. They're seeing the success. They're, these are their heroes. Uh, just, just like when we talk with all the guests we have on, it's like who were some of the players, you know, when you're nine years old, 10 years old, 11 years old, those are some of the, the, some of the, the players that you, that you remember forever. And so the success that's going on right now, I think it's good for the game. I, I just think in, in the next 10 years, the next 20 years, co- women's college basketball sh- should be better and stronger than it is now. Well, Matt, it's also like people who are very big fans of Eduardo the Sherpa in Clarksville. They kind of follow him from show to show, you know, they don't want to ever miss a call that Eddie makes to to this show or to any of the others across the state. I mean, he's got, let's just call it what it is. They're Eduardo the Sherpa groupies, I guess. He's got talent. And he's here with us, too. Eduardo, how are you doing today? Man, I am doing good, man. It certainly is a great feeling, you know, as I said last week. I could feel it in the air, the recipe, a baking in the oven. And boy, was it, baking in the oven. I guess uh, you're talking about heavyweight and LSU. I mean, very easily, don't count LSU out just yet because they're scary good, All the, as all the teams are. All of them are heavyweights. But I just felt the mental edge. When you talk about mental toughness, this is an ingredient of baseball hard delight I got to have this year. Can you – I mean, they are mentally tough. They get If they get down a run or two, they do not panic. And it ain't just our pitching. It's our hitting. It's our defense. We find a way to win. And that's a key ingredient that's going to carry us all season long. I couldn't be happier. How was that dessert? How did it taste this weekend in the press box field? It tasted delicious, Eduardo. I mean, it was really good. The Hog Delight recipe was steaming and boiling all at the same time. Pitching was the cinnamon. Base running was the sugar. Plays in the field were the salt. And the depth game management by Dave Van Horn was the flour that made it all stick together. It, it just tasted so good, Eduardo. And I also want to just say that might be the first question you've ever asked me here on these phone calls that you've been doing here for three and a half years. It's a huge step forward. I want to thank you for the question. Now it's your turn. Well, sir, I tell you what, just like I said last week, you know, after uh, our disappointing basketball season, after our disappointing football season, it certainly is to wake up number one in all the land. And I tell you what, I'm backing it up. And I couldn't think when I woke up this morning, I sent you a little message, a song that Bachman Turner, you know what that song is? Taking care of business. And that's what this team does. And when you talk about, you know, there's nothing wrong with a little trash talk. So I, I just think LSU, you know, they go out there and they do everything. You either have the mojo or you don't. And so... I think our baseball home train has got the mojo. And they, they're really tough, and they want to win. And they just won players, and I couldn't be happy. What about Stovall? What about and Stovall? And sure, you put that man up the rest of the season. Woo, you're talking about speed, and I think it deserves this. You know, I talked about a wrestler that walked into the Omni, and he flexed his mojo back in the day because he brought that toughness to the wrestling ring. And you know who that was. It's Rick Flair. The and for this baseball hot drink, I think deserves after this weekend, sweeping the Tigers back to back roots. And they we left their bellies full of baseball hot delight. It is Rick Flair. And it's a plus field style for the baseball hot drink. Woo! Beautiful, Eduardo. Thank you so much. And I think I forgot about the butter in our recipe. I mean, it is the South. You got to have butter and hog delight. Well, are his groupies called Woo Pig Sooties? Or are they called Little Hog Delights? I what, think that would be little, called a walk-off. That would be a, a, wa- a walk-off statement. But I do have to tell you uh, about what's going on at Fish City Grill in Rogers right now. That, that is a walk-off statement, no doubt. At Fish City Grill, April, all month long, beer, battered cod, tacos, fried in their house-made beer batter. It comes with slaw, Fresno chili tartar, pickled jalapeno, cilantro, and sweet potato fries. Or ask about the miso-glazed salmon. Chilean salmon marinated in Asian miso glaze sauce. It comes with sugar snap peas, slaw, and lemon basil rice. That's at Fish City Grill. Available for curbside or pickup. Just call 479-636-8833. Or give them a visit on South Bellevue Road in Rogers. Also online at fishcitygrill.com. Mike Irwin from Pig Trail Nation joins halftime right after this. 
Are you looking for the best Razorbacks insight and analysis? Hell yes. How about listening to an Arkansas football legend? Matt Jones. All he does is make big plays. What's the voice of the Hogs have to say? Hey, what a great crowd last night. Don't forget about the Omahogs. The Hogs are going to Omaha. Matt Jones, Chuck Barrett, and Phil Elson, the best in the business on the Hit That Line podcast network. Go to hitthatline.com or search Hit That Line wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Hmm, let's see. Leaky faucet Tuesday. Water flooding the yard. Hmm, better put that down for the middle of the month when the bills aren't due. Honey, what are you doing? Planning our plumbing for problems, of course. You can't plan our plumbing problems, but you should plan our plumber. What do you mean? Like all important contacts, I keep West Arc Plumbing in my phone. They're always there when we need them, and they don't overcharge since they know we don't plan our plumbing problems. Here, honey, here's their number. 646-5151. Thanks, babe. West Arc Plumbing. We keep you flowing. At Southern Tire Mart, we look out for you and your vehicle. Come visit us for America's most trusted brands like Michelin Tires and top-of-the-line service. You can depend on Southern Tire Mart and Michelin Tires to keep you rolling. Come see us at Southern Tire Mart, just off I-540, exit 14 in Fort Smith, for Michelin Tires that fit your needs and service that cares for you like family. Tommy Craft here for The Fence Man, the company you can trust when it comes to building your next fence. The Fence Man recently built new gates for my existing fence. The whole process was easy, quick, and most importantly, affordable. Plus, 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available with The Fence Man. If you need a new fence, gate, or anything that involves a fence, call The Fence Man, 479-782-3936. That's 782-3936. The Fence Man. He ain't afraid of no work. Hello, this is Sebastian County Assessor Zach Johnson here to remind you to assess your personal property by May 31st to avoid late penalty. You can do this in person at one of our three locations, over the phone, or online by going to www.countyservice.net. I would also like to remind any current homeowners or individuals buying their homes on contract to contact our office and check on your eligibility for the Homestead Tax Credit. Contact us today to see if you qualify. The Homestead Tax Credit can save you up to $425 off of your tax bill. This ad sponsored by Sebastian County Assessor and paid for by Amendment 7. Patriot Transport wants to thank their drivers for their hard work and dedication. The local and over-the-road drivers are essential to the Patriot Transport mission. Day in and day out, Patriot Transport drivers are on the road striving for safety and success. To the -the behind-the-scenes dispatch and office employees, Patriot Transport thanks them as well for the hard work they put in day and night. If you want to be a part of the Patriot Transport family, visit PatriotTransport.com. Patriot Transport is located in Danville, Arkansas. I am a waitress, so I know the difference between regular shoes and Skechers slip-resistant work shoes. Skechers slip-resistant work shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Primavera. Thanks. While regular shoes make my job go like this. Here's your Pasta Prima... Whoa, whoa. And that difference is why I wear Skechers slip-resistant work shoes to keep me safe on my feet. Plus, they're easy to clean and have Skechers exclusive air-cooled memory foam for comfort throughout my shift. Get America's number one selling work shoe at Skechers.com, a Skechers store near you, or wherever work shoes are sold. Do you need an attorney that you can actually speak with? You need Hickey & Hole Law Partners. The attorneys at Hickey & Hole understand the importance of client communication and are taking the time to meet you, respond to emails, and return calls. Every case is important, and they strive to give each one the time and attention it deserves. Call today, 479-434-2414 or visit them online at kevinhickeylaw.com. Hickey and Whole Law Partners, things are about to get better. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3.
Make sure to follow Halftime on Twitter at Hit That Line AR and on Facebook and Instagram at Hit That Line. Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now back to Halftime with Phil Elson and Matt Jones. All guests join Halftime on the McClarty Daniel Hotline. That's where Mike Irwin from Pig Trail Nation is right now. And we always appreciate talking with you, Mike, on Mondays. How you doing? Doing good. Just reading some of these April Fool things on on Twitter. It's pretty funny. Uh, Lane Kiffin going to Auburn and different stuff like that. You know, it's it's kind of funny to read that stuff. Yeah, you got to do a little extra sourcing um, on April Fool's Day. Can't just believe the things you read. Nah, you know, you gotta you gotta do that sourcing no matter what. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go with baseball first here. I want to play something from Dave Van Horn. And, and then get your reaction on, on how well this team has played since the return of Peyton Stovall. We knew it was going to happen. When he came back, it was going to just solidify our defense. Another left-handed hitter, maybe a guy that could hit leadoff. If not, we're going to him two-hole, three-hole. But I think he likes leading off. You know, he'll take a walk, but he'll also hit you a home run every now and then. And you got to think about this. He's hitting... 360 or something he's doing it all against the league he didn't get any of them cookie games and the wind's blowing out 30 miles an hour and the wind's out of the north and we're playing somebody that has run out of pitching and we're scoring 10 12 15 runs i mean he pretty much has to do it been doing it against the sec so i looked at his numbers yesterday i think he what do you have like 40 at bats now or 35 40 going into today and if that and so when his bats pick up, he's going to get even more comfortable. Mike, they were playing well without Stovall in the lineup. They've been playing better with him in the lineup. And uh, this, I think this is fine. This is the first time I think we have really been able to see the real Peyton Stovall, comfortable, healthy, and leading a team. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's kind of put a little juice in the entire offense. We're not at a point anymore where it's just the – where they're just winning games on pitching. I mean, you – you talk about a, a series that could have gone either way. The Arkansas could have been swept. They were behind in all three of those LSU games. And all three, they came back with a combination of scoring runs when they had to, and then the pitching came on and did what it had to do. But, yeah, Stovall has, I think, put a charge in this team. Their team batting average is back up to around 280. Their home runs, for a long time, they were below a home run a game. Now they're at about almost one and a half a game, and it's going up. So that helps. And, um, man, there's just not much to complain about. This is this baseball team, to me, you talk about guys playing together. They've had 11 two-run wins on the season and five one-run wins. You don't do that without guys pulling together. And that's what I like about this team. They're just, they're just a bunch of guys that like each other. I mean, when – when that when that home when that walk off home run was hit on uh, on Friday night, and you know you saw the reaction out there, all the people, all those guys tearing his shirt off and pouring water on his head and stuff, and you know he's a newcomer, a guy that transferred in from Texas Tech, hadn't exactly been tearing it up, but he wins a game, and you can just see, wow, look at and and Helfrich, who's also a catcher, was out there, you know, the main one doing all that. So these, these guys like each other. They do, and, you know, I mean, winning, winning will have a lot to do with that. But what I'm, what I'm seeing is, so I just brought in the idea of Stovall. I think, he's, I think he's probably the most complete, well-rounded player on the team. Uh, and it, you even look at, like, the pitching staff, too. There's so much talk on, on Hagen Smith and, and what he's done this year. But this is a team with really an incredibly solid bullpen. It's not just the starting pitchers. And if I, you, you try to think of a weakness for this team right now, and I think some people would point to leaving runners on base, but I also point out it's like, well, they are getting a lot of guys on base. There is a chance to score. Um, so maybe the one thing you point to is clutch hitting here and there but they just don't need as many clutch hits because they're so difficult to score against. Yeah, and Stovall's playing a hell of a second base, too. I mean, he's, he's saving runs out there. A lot, they had a lot of that this week. And games, you know, were, could have been decided on errors. Uh, if you make an error in a critical position, you know, all of a sudden Arkansas loses the game. They, again, that, 
LSU is down in the standings, but anybody that watched that series and, and, and says they're not very good is not paying attention. I think they'll be around at the end of the year and a, a team you have to contend with. Uh, they they were pretty scary as far as I was. I was impressed with the fa- fact that they never stopped trying to come back. They never gave up. Hey, uh, Mike, what, what were your thoughts on uh, this Elite Eight? Uh, I, I thought it was some pretty good games. Now, I missed every one of them, but UConn, uh, I, I don't know where, where you were going. Uh, the NC State still surprising me. Uh, Grant Nelson's uh, game he had where he was he was the best player on the floor. Uh, what's been your takeaway as we settle down and have these, these Ben's Final Four teams? Only game I saw because I was wrapped up with baseball was Alabama. And uh, Clemson, Clemson, and I was able to see that because it was on late, and that game was not as close as it looked. I mean, it was close throughout, but Alabama was just out playing them. I mean, they outscored them what twenty four points, twenty four points from three. Uh, that's incredible. You had eight threes, sixteen threes to eight threes. That's twenty four points right there. The only thing Clemson did was they had a plus eight on, on two-point shots. I mean, they got out-rebounded. Uh, the, the free-throw shooting was terrible. Uh, I'm not sure I've ever seen a guy hit seven straight threes in an NCAA wow. tournament game. That was just unbelievable. They kept pulling it. Clemson kept pulling it back to six, and then he'd just go down and jack up a three, and it's back up to nine. They just never could get close. When you're when you're doing that to somebody, and they by the by the end of the game, the last four or five minutes, they were also scoring at will inside. I think they just wore them down. So I know Razorback fans don't like it about that, that Alabama made it to the Final Four, but they deserved it. They they played a heck of a game. Now I didn't see uh, UConn and Illinois, but I know what happened. A 30-0 run, that's also unbelievable. And so their defense is incredible. So what what does Alabama do now? It's going to be real interesting to see how UConn handles that three point shooting and all that ball movement and assists that they've been getting and all that's going to, that's going to be a heck of a game and one I really want to see. Yeah, what how do you, how do you stop Zach Eady, Mike? I mean this this guy Phil was going over some stats. He he's only fouling once or twice a game and then he's getting what he had nineteen fouls called against him. I don't know if I've ever seen that. It, it's before. it's ridiculous. I, I, I don't know how, how how does anybody stop Zach Eady? Yeah, there there was a lot of complaints from from Tennessee fans that the refs were favoring him. But if you watch and somebody made this point and I agree with it, he doesn't take a lot of risk defensively. I think he understands how important he is to their offense. So he's not out there trying to block shots and drawing a lot of fouls, and that's when he doesn't get fouls called on him. But on the other hand, he's just a force, you know, and that's all That's all you need to say about that guy. Now, again, you get complaints. Oh, he travels in the lane. Oh, he commits lane violations. There's a lot of things that happen inside around the basket these days that I think is a little bit lax. But I think what officiating is, I think the overall kind of marching orders these guys have when they get together before a tournament starts, and I saw this in SEC play, let them play, let's don't have endless strips to the free throw line, let teams get physical, and if somebody takes a little extra step here and there, we're not going to call that. We're going to let the game be excited, and I don't have an issue with that. We haven't had any any, – Well, no, that's not true. I was going to say no coaching changes in the SEC for men's basketball, but that's not true. Vanderbilt's made a change. Do you see Kelly Harper was let go by Tennessee today? Um, Yeah. Man, I mean, in my mind, I keep thinking, well, that's a surprise, but, I mean, this is a program that hasn't been to the Final Four in, I think it's been 14 or 15 years. Yeah, Yeah. so, I mean, that's – they obviously didn't think they were going to get there with Kelly Harper, but this – it's you know, that's a program that's that's, – it's got a certain set of standards, and they just they haven't been there in a long, long time. But that one, that one did kind of surprise me when I first saw it. Yeah, and you still got at least some fans nervous about Musselman. He still hasn't made a comment. That whole must bus thing that was put up on the internet, uh, people are starting to react to that differently than than I certainly did initially. I didn't realize the ending had been changed. It was an old video. There's about ten explanations for what that could have meant. But the bottom line is, 
Musselman hasn't had a press conference. He hasn't said anything publicly. He was out, and and there's a job opening at USC. He was out there for the for the games, and there's just a few people still kind of nervous that he might go there. I I don't think he will. People that I talk to say he might leave, but it would be for a situation that he really wants, and there's not one out there that's available to him that he wants right now. So we'll see if that happens. But the the fact that we we're, we're still into this. I don't know how long is it over two weeks and no comment has been made and maybe we'll go another two weeks. I don't know. Well, in, in watching March Madness, watching this tournament, Mike, I, I, I've really come to realize you obviously we need guards, but you got to have a big, you got to have somebody inside. Didn't Every we? team in the final four, they don't just have a big, they got a big who can score. And you got to maybe even have two. Didn't, didn't Arkansas get a six ten guy in the portal? Do you think that's a good sign that must, must be back? Oh, absolutely. I think right off the bat, they landed exactly what they needed. I mean, he's a guy, people are saying, you know, he's he's sort of a Graham replacement, but I think he's better than that. Um, he's a good offensive player, good foot move, movement around the basket. I've looked, watched, looked, watched some video of him. And, you know, they got Bay Fall coming back, who's 6'11". Let's see if he can develop in the off season. I think they'll still try to bring in another big. I think they're they're going to try to bring in a, a kind of a power forward type, six seven, six eight, two thirty in that range, somebody that's physical. And I still think they need a point guard, at least a point. They're going. To, there's going. To, they are, they are just getting started. The thing you keep hearing is that they've kind of got a hole going on with their with the. They've got some guys that are willing to come, but they've kind of put it on hold a little bit, which tells me they are being very careful this time about who they bring in. They're checking, you know, the background of all of these guys, trying to make sure they don't bring in the wrong people. That's interesting. Yeah. And and look, I mean, not every not every program has some sort of like a postseason press conference to wrap it all up. Uh, it's That's just, true. It's just that there's been it's been total radio silence. I mean, no no tweets you know, for a coach that usually is, is, is out there publicly on, on social media. Yeah, he's I think all has, over Twitter. But I think he's usually has, all over. But that has more, I think that has more to do that the team isn't playing right now. If they were playing, we, we would see whatever T-shirt and hat he got from whatever team and, and the practices and all that. I just have, <laughs> it has more to do with the lack of success for the team, I think, than anything else. Yeah, I've always said that about Vitello at Tennessee in baseball. If they're good, he's popping off. He's all over the place. You don't hear squat from him right now. He's just standing over there, silent. So I, I think that what you just said is a pretty good explanation about what's going on. Yeah. Hey, Mike, thanks for your time, man. Um, we'll visit again next week, okay? Okay. Okay. See you guys. Thank you, Mike. That'll be on Eclipse Day, by the way, too. That's right. It'll be on Eclipse Day when we talk to Mike Irwin. And heck, that might even be around the time that the Eclipse is going on. I'll be in the Fort Smith location for the party place. No, I'll be in the Conway location. Uh, the party place on Oak Street. Matt will be at the Fort Smith Party Place location behind Ashley Furniture on Rogers Avenue. It's a great place to get your uh, Eclipse sunglasses and any other kind of decoration for a party, for weddings, for birthdays, uh, for uh, for stage productions, for Razorback events, anything. It's all going on at the party place. Two locations in our listening audience. Conway on Oak Street and Fort Smith behind Ashley Furniture on Rogers Avenue. Meanwhile, you can call or text the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Halftime is back in just a moment. You can now download our new app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Listen anytime and anywhere on your favorite mobile device. Just search hit. This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned. Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Thanks for watching us here on ESPN Arkansas. Download the brand new Hit That Line Now app in the Apple and Google Play stores. ESPN Arkansas. More than just radio stations. Call or text the McClarty Daniel hotline at 877-377-6963. McClarty Daniel, a vehicle for every lifestyle. When you're looking for a new car, you want to shop for a vehicle you love with an organization you trust. 
You've probably heard that McCarty Daniel means making deals, but what I'm inspired by the most is that McCarty Daniel means making a difference in our community. When you buy a vehicle with McCarty Daniel, you reinvest right here in the community, in our schools, in our little leagues, in our food banks, and our people. So you're not just making a purchase, you're making a difference too. Come see us at any of our six locations in Northwest Arkansas. Tommy Craft here. When it came time for new gates and some fence repairs at my home, the fence man was my first call. The fence man does it all, from large commercial jobs to small residential repairs. Wood privacy fence, vinyl fence, commercial or residential chain link, even custom wrought iron fencing. 479-782-3936. 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available. If it involves fencing, the fence man does it. The fence man. He ain't afraid of no work. 479-782-3936. It's a dandy white perch. Big old slab. C'est bon, Sakali. One beautiful crappie. It's a paper mouth. <laughs> Some serious crappie. Nice spec. We got crappie. They might go by different names, but all prefer the same thing. Bobby Garland, America's favorite. White perch, slab, Sakale, paper mouth, crappie, spec, crappie baits. I call it dinner. The tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up to the national championship. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile device and even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. Are you looking for the best Razorbacks insight and analysis? Hell yes. How about listening to an Arkansas football legend? Matt Jones. All he does is make big plays. What's the voice of the Hogs have to say? Hey, what a great crowd last night. Don't forget about the Omahogs. The Hogs are going to Omaha. Matt Jones, Chuck Barrett, and Phil Elson. The best in the business on the Hit That Line podcast network. Go to hitthatline.com or search Hit That Line wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Madonna has gone from like a virgin to like a surgeon. You can try to nip and tuck from the curse of sin, but eventually death is going to win. God will do major surgery on this sin-filled world, and when he does, people will try and hide their faces from him. Even plastic Christians won't be exempt. Look up Isaiah chapter 2 and see how the spiritual world renders this an immaterial world. I'm Pastor Abe from Woodland. Read about it. This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Combo and Voodoo Shrimp, plus fan favorites like Juicy Burgers and Fresh Salads. Find your nearest location in Rogers, Fayetteville, Fort Smith, Conway, and coming soon to Little Rock. Or order online or in the app. Walk on Sports Bistro for the win. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. <laughs> Can you hear me call? Aren't you mean? You know that I'm falling and I don't know what to say. Speak a little louder, I'll even shout. You know that I'm proud and I can't get the words out. I want to be with you everywhere. Welcome back to Halftime with Bill Elson and Matt Jones. Got a question or comment for the guys? Call or text on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Let's get back to the show with the voice of Arkansas Razorback baseball, Bill Elson, and Razorback football legend, Matt Jones. Matt, did you see this story from yesterday's um, regional final in Portland, in the women's side of the tournament, North Carolina State and Texas? have the choice of 
wait an hour and allow the tournament officials to remeasure and then draw or tape the three-point line on one end of the court or just play it with one three-point line being farther back than the other. Whomever lined the court lined it improperly. And you could see it when you look at the photo from high above that, yeah, one side of the court, the three-point line is quite a bit closer to the top of the key than the other side. You know, sometimes you have those technical difficulties, whether they be your mic, uh, maybe the rims. Not I've seen the rim not be ten foot at some places, or not really? be, uh, not level. It, it was in the NBA. I want to say if it was a, an Orlando Magic game, they they come out there and put the level on it, and it's a little off, so it takes an hour. But uh, the the last game, I the the last minor league baseball game I went to, I'm pretty sure I told you this story. The catcher caught the very first pitch. And then he was done. So the backup catcher had to get, so it took 45. And so it just seemed like an inordinate amount, maybe 17 minutes, but after the game starts and then you got to wait. So what they decide to do? Did they play they it? Just or played it. Yeah, that's what I'd have done. They just play it. Cause it would take, don't forget about how long it takes. Let's to, go. Cause you'd have to remeasure the whole thing. No, let's go. Let's And then whoever did that, I'm sorry, guy, but you lost your job. You can go back to to Peyton High School lines because if you you had one job to do, it is the, it is one of those you had one job kind of a things. Was that a traveler game where that happened? Yeah, you, your boy was third baseman, and I said he kind of looking over it like he like he didn't seem like the enthusiasm was. He was a Razorback. I was kind of like, hey, you think he's ever going to make the bigs? He he didn't look like he was having his best day that day. They were playing I, I, the Tulsa Drillers. I remember some traveler games, and and so the guys who line the field are the interns. The interns for the travelers then, and I, I think it might be somewhat similar now, would work on the grounds crew. Like that was their internship was to be part of the grounds crew. And it's not like they were necessarily the best trained. I really do think, and I used to, my seat at Traveler Games was right behind the plate up where the booth is located. And you could kind of think it's the, is the, is the, is the, is the catcher's box just a little bit askew? Something just doesn't seem right. Uh, so I would just try to watch the intern who would put down the frame, they've got a frame and then line over it. And it looked, it looked like he could kind of had it a little bit askew, but I've never seen a baseball game that had to be delayed because the field wasn't drawn properly. <laughs> it's like, that is, again, it's like a one job thing, but everything is straight. I mean, you, you put the circles around the batter's area, you put the circle maybe around the mound, but everything is straight. I've had uh, to do that before. Have you ever had to do that before? That never job? had to line a baseball field. So my my pops when he's coach uh, when you when you're a head football coach, you know, at a junior high or high school, you kind of got to do all the field stuff too. But I've done that with them before. Where you put the string down, you get it down. It's a it's a tedious process. It's a all day. It's it's uh the first one when you spray the oil and make the make the the lines. But to put the chalk on it, then you don't have to. It's a little easier each time after that. But yeah, to get that set up the right way. And you can't, man, you got to do it right that first time. Yeah, you can't time. have any waviness mm -hmm. to it. Because if there's any waviness, you get to scratch that sucker out and start all over again. Well, and it makes it a lot easier when you just have a baseball field that has the lines already drawn on it and everything's artificial. What do they that say? That would be the one thing that I could say about an artificial baseball field. Because I hate all of these fields like in Kentucky and Vanderbilt that have not a single speck of, of, of anything on it that's real. Um outside of whatever chemical composition is put together to form this field, at least the lines will always be straight, and you don't have to start over with those things. It's a shame. Kentucky, the bluegrass state, and, and we're going to go AstroTurf on like, it. Like, come on now. It's like, how, how, how is that your name? Yeah. It's, it's like, well, I'm trying to think. Florida's the sunshine state. It would be like having a dome in a ballpark in the Sunshine State. But then again, they kind of yeah. have that in Tampa, and I think Miami uh, as is, well. Is Tampa off to their 17-1 and one start like they did last year? Didn't they start off some some crazy number? Uh, the Rays? I, I, yeah, I know your Pittsburgh your Pittsburgh uh, Pirates are a Harrison Barnes 4-0. Uh, they, they got started off to the to the right number, but I didn't know who was who has had the hot streak right now. Well, the, it's the Pirates and the Yankees that are obviously going to be playing in the World Series. They're both 4-0. That's right. We got a phone call on the McClarty Daniel hotline from Keith in El Dorado. Hey, Keith, thanks for the call. What's going on? Well, I had a question about a scenario that happened in my grandson's baseball game this weekend. I want to see what the ruling is on this. The bases were loaded. All right. There was, there was one out. Batted ball. 
hits the runner going from first to second, what's the rule? The batted ball that hits the runner. How many outs? There's one out? One out. The batted ball is a base hit. Uh, the runner going from first to second is out. The batter gets a single and gets first base. And I'm trying to remember if the runners are able to advance. I don't think they can advance at that point. I think it's a dead ball. And everybody goes back. Well, that's what we all thought, too. But uh, the umpires let the run count, and it was the bottom of the last inning that we lost. You know, oh. one run because <laughs> the score was tied. Going to need to get so, that checked. I'm going to need a ruling, judges. Yeah, but, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. They they talked about it forever. They, of course, the other team was arguing that the run should score. Um, but my son found something, I don't know, I guess in a rule book or he Googled it or whatever. And it's, uh, let me see if I can read it to you. You, can I read it to you real quick, or you just want to figure this out on your own? Right, we don't need to read. We don't need to read from the rule book on the on the radio. That's okay. But I <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> well, it's just it's confusing, is what I'm getting at. But uh, yes, I mean a lot of the a lot of these a lot of these rules get a little bit um, in the weeds, uh, so to speak. So that would be a reason why I wouldn't want to be reading from it. But yeah, those things can get a little bit. A little bit confusing sometimes. We saw a guy was two outs, bases loaded, and it was one of the Arkansas opponents. That there was at Murray State against Brady Tiger. Ball hit the bat. Ball hit a runner between first and second. That ended the inning. But I think it's a dead ball at that point. It was when the ball hits an umpire or hits a runner. It's a dead ball. Nobody can advance from that moment. So my guess, Keith, is they got that call wrong. But that's okay. Eight seven seven three seven seven. 6963 for calls and texts. And we get a text from Nashville, Arkansas that says he's heard this guy on travel websites, travel baseball websites, and he's been uh, up in arms about it. But I get it. I get it. I would feel the same way. Yeah, the Sunshine State baseball parks do have roofs. Marlins and Rays both have a roof. So go figure. So the Sunshine State, I guess the Bluegrass State is allowed to have fake grass. Well, yeah, you'd like to see him now could be retractable, um, but I agree. let's get away. Let's get rid of the AstroTurf. Pretty please. All right, we'll wrap up hour number two of halftime. Stay with us. Spring is just around the corner, and Jelco Outdoors is ready with all of your spring fishing gear. Crappie, bass, catfish, Jelco has a great selection of rods, reels, and baits to help you fill that stringer. Spring turkey supplies are rolling in daily, and the firearms department is stocked up with ammo for outdoor shooting. Spring is almost here, so get outdoors and enjoy the spring season. Stop by Jelco Outdoors, 4600 South Zero in Fort Smith. For all your outdoor gear, think spring, think Jelco Outdoors. Dozy Place has now been serving award-winning steaks for over 20 years. Celebrate your special birthday, holiday, person, or just because at Dozy Place. Start with delicious appetizers and your choice of drinks from the largest selection of wines, beer, and liquor in the River Valley. Dozy Place is open Tuesday through Thursday, 5 till 9, and Friday and Saturday, 5 till 10. Reservations are recommended, so call 784-9111. 784-9111 for Dozy Place, 422 North 3rd Street, Fort Smith. Precision Overhead Door features the finest quality materials, installation, and service for all of your overhead door needs. Fully licensed and insured with locations in Rogers and Fort Smith, serving all of Northwest Arkansas and the River Valley. Give them a call today at 844-PBS-DOOR or online at PrecisionDoorNWA.com. Back-to-back winners of the Best of Award, Gold Best Garage Company in Northwest Arkansas, and also winners of the River Valley Precision Overhead Door. Attention homeowners, storms are firing up quickly and widespread damage means thousands are reaching out for the right roofing company. Don't wait. Get on the schedule with Shamrock Roofing and Construction now for quality and peace of mind. One call does it all. Shamrock Roofing and Construction call 479-319-5100. Need new roof? Shamrock Roofing and Construction can have you covered right now for as low as $139.99 with approved credit. For quality and peace of mind, one call does it all. Shamrock Roofing and Construction call 479-319-5100. This summer, take control of your outdoor space with a mosquito misting system from Mosquito Joe. It's the ultimate solution for mosquito-free living. Mosquito Joe installs cutting-edge misting systems discreetly around areas such as pools, patios, and boat docks to create a protective barrier that banishes those annoying bugs. The best part is you don't have to do a thing. It's like having a mosquito control technician in your yard 24-7. Visit arkansas.mosquitojoe.com. 
Got a pest? Call West. If you have pest or termite problems in your home, call West today and learn how their 50 years combined experience can help solve your problems with competitive pricing and quality services, all designed with your pets and children in mind. Call today and schedule your free estimate. They even offer Saturday services and long life attic pest control. Call 782-7291. West Termite and Pest Control, protecting your home health and peace of mind. Come get you some. 2728 Townsend Avenue is your off-road and performance center headquarters. They've got everything from lift kits, wheels, LED light bars, UTV parts and accessories, winches and tires. Need general 4x4 repair? No problem. Come get you some has one of the largest 4x4 shops in the state. They do it all, from installing a bug shield to building some of the baddest off-road machines in the country. Call them today at 782-6833. That's 782-MUD. Or check them out online at cgysoffroad.com. Come get you some. If you've lived in the River Valley for a while, you know about the great reputation of Jam Mart. And their newest location at 6201 Grand Avenue in Fort Smith is open. Stop by for coffee, gas, beer, snacks, ices, and a clean restroom every time. Don't forget about the hot deli and fresh made burgers. Now seven locations in Fort Smith, Greenwood, Boonville, Ozark, and Danville. Sign up for their loyalty program for discounts throughout the stores. Jam Mart, the leading convenience store and gas station in the region. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN Welcome back into Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Studios. Crabtree RV Center in Alma, where we make your dreams come true. All right, let's get an update on halftime homework here from the C unit. <clears throat> All right, Christian, uh, almost famous uh, this weekend. What did you think? Great movie. I uh, fell asleep, but I ended up watching, finishing the rest. I was so tired when I started watching it, but I, f- I watched the whole thing. I, I thought it was very interesting as far as like the time period and everything, and 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 the 15 year old writer or whatever who uh just kind of was taken under their wing it was kind of funny he was just <laughs> he was there with them through everything it was funny he was he was there with them through everything gained their trust they didn't really want to trust him uh but maybe only a kid could have gained their trust to begin with sounds like I, it sounds like we did all right i was a little nervous at first matt because i thought we were just going to get a two word review but he expounded upon it a little bit more. It was like his review, the little kid's review. He's like, yeah, he played guitar like a golden god. Did you? So you made it to the end where he was yep. a little upset about what he wrote about him. And oh, then, yeah. he, then he was like, yeah, but you did say that, you know? Like it was, uh, I thought it's, I mean, almost famous. If you, you're talking about 500 movies you got to watch, that that would be on the list. I would agree. What was? What's the name of the magazine in the movie? Rolling, were, oh, uh, was it a... Uh, cream cream was it cream yeah do you ever read have you ever read rolling stone magazine i don't think i have a lot different now i think than what it what it meant you know when when crow was writing for them and even in the 80s and the 90s it's just uh it's 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 different it's 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 a digital i can't can't think of another magazine that really has that kind of um i guess impact or cachet with the section of society. Who was but that? I don't know if it's the same. I, I don't think it's the same now. Who was that blonde girl in real life again? I've seen her. Kate Hudson. Yeah, that's right. That's Goldie Hawn's daughter. Penny and I Lane. don't think you know who Goldie Hawn is. No, but I do yeah. know Kate Hudson. Kate, well, Kate Hudson is Goldie Hawn's daughter. So no, we've got to get you in there, too. Now we're going to have to get him to watch Wildcats, the movie. That's a sports movie. Do you remember Wildcats? Never Goldie s- Hawn, the football coach? 
Oh, that's where uh, with with Robin Williams and and uh, no nope, different movie. Oh, okay, then same I era. I hadn't seen it then, but I know that one. Where he comes out in his all white spikes when they're all getting uh, getting dirty. We had yeah. so many football movies around that time, so that would have been yeah, best of the best of our times, which is the movie you're talking about, Wildcats. Um, uh, you had the, all the right moves. All the right, right moves came out about the same time, so maybe we need to get you to Private Benjamin was a good movie with Goldie Hawn. Burn on a wire with her and Kurt Russell because I think I can understand why you went the Russell route because the two of them uh, is uh, is Kurt Russell Kate Hudson's father. Was that uh, overboard? Was that the time that the, yes. that would have been done? Overboard. See, these are now this, this we're talking about one of the queens of the 1980s, uh, and she was also in First Wives Club, right? Was she in that movie too? I think she might have been in that one as well. Yeah, Dan of Mount Ida likes Overboard. Maybe we can get you to watch Overboard at some point. I think that was also a movie that was remade that didn't need to be remade. Just tack that on the list of about 8,000 movies that didn't need to be remade. Uh, our phone number for calls and texts on the McClarty Daniel hotline for halftime, 877-377-6963. Get a great deal of any of Mark uh, McClarty Daniels vehicles at any of their six locations in Springdale or Bentonville, and they're always online at McClartyDaniel.com. We're into the third and final hour of halftime right after the break. Let me grab my car keys and we'll roll. Are we still going to that new bar downtown? Yeah, it's supposed to be fun. Lexi, give me driving directions from home to downtown bar district. Auto correct. Suggest Uber. Pick up home. Drop off downtown bar district. No, I'm driving. Suggest the metro bus. Departing in 12 minutes. Point taken, Lexi. We'll grab a ride. If you drink, don't drive. Decide to ride. Brought to you in partnership by Anheuser Busch, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and Uber. Are you tired of the overcrowded fitness centers? Would you like a fitness option where you can actually work out? Then let's hang out. The Hangout is Fort Smith's newest fitness facility. It has an 8,000 square foot gym, indoor tennis, pickleball, and basketball with more sports coming soon. The Hangout offers group and individual training in the gym and boasts three active tennis pros to help you grow your game. Stop in today at 5400 Gary Street or thehangoutfs.com for more information. Be a part of something different. Fitness, sports, and more. Let's hang out. Out. Insurance company throwing you a curveball? Are they crowding the plate and not offering you a fair settlement? If you've been injured in a car wreck, you need an experienced attorney to fight for you. I'm Jackie Mock with Mock Legal Solutions. Licensed in Arkansas and Oklahoma, no win, no fee. Call Mock Legal Solutions today for your free consultation. 479-769-1505. Real advice, reasonable price. Oh, Hi, this is Matt Jones with The Halftime Show, and I will be broadcasting live from the Party Place in Fort Smith on April 8th, or better known as Eclipse Day, from 11 to 2. Halftime will be at their new location at 7810 Rogers Avenue behind Ashley Furniture. It's going to be a Party Place celebration with fun things to do and, of course, giveaways. It's The Halftime Show at the Party Place on Monday, April 8th. After I drop the kids off, I have to run across town for a meeting, hit the gym during lunch. Jake has soccer tonight, and Emily has gymnastics. Oh, did I turn on the crock pot this morning? <laughs> with a never-ending to-do list, it's easy to forget something important, like setting up a life insurance plan with Shelter Insurance. Your local shelter agent can show you how to create a safety net for your family. Shelter Life Insurance Company, Columbia, Missouri. Call your local shelter agent, Chris Dooley, at 479-646-6792. ESPN Arkansas weather. For today, a pretty quiet go of it, but some active weather moving in tonight into Tuesday. Some storms could contain some golf ball sized hail, isolated tornadoes, and also the chance of 60 mile per hour winds. So a few isolated showers and storms across the north today. Temperatures mid to upper 70s. Showers and storms intensify tonight. I'm meteorologist Sally Russell. This is Think Radio. The weather is brought to you by Shamrock Liquor Warehouse, 5609 Midland Boulevard, your leader in fine wines, beers, and spirits. KERX Paris Fort Smith. This is halftime coming at you from the Crabtree RV Studios on ESPN 953. 
Coming to you live from the Crabtree RV Center Studios. Broadcasting on ESPN Arkansas and streaming on hitthatline.com. We got a good one tonight. You got a team in here that's a perspective. <laughs> We're going to go get one and celebrate on somebody else's tail. Bill said you had very motivational words at halftime. It's halftime with Bill Olson and Matt Jones. From the bottom of my toes to the top of my head. Oh, Probably as frustrated as, as I've been uh, the first half. What they even one race about? Second half, uh, very happy. It is vintage Matt Jones. Here we go. Right now, let's take the field. Call or text on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Olson and Matt Jones. And we welcome you back in to halftime for hour number three on ESPN Arkansas and HitThatLine.com. I'm Phil Elson with my partner Matt Jones and the C-Unit Christian Johnston producing. There are no guests in this last hour of halftime, so it's between you and us. 877-377-6963 for calls and texts on a McClarty Daniel hotline. C-Unit and Matt, we've got a few texts in that remind us that uh, Goldie Hawn, who was, is, not was, is, Kate Hudson's mom, was discovered on a television show named Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, which I'm not sure if you've ever seen that before. I've seen a couple of episodes. It was a precursor to uh, Saturday Night Live, in a sense, a little different than SNL. Um, But she was a go-go dancer on Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, and that's where she got her start and then blew up as a complete star from that show. That is a show that had a famous line, sock it to me, and they even got a sitting president to do that. I don't remember if Nixon was president or if he was running for president in 68 when he went on the show. Sock it to me? (laughs) Yeah. I can't see a president going on and doing that now. That would be, uh, be entertained by it for sure. Sock it to me. Sock it to me, sock it to you. That's right. Uh, the, uh, Goldie Hawn, the the one movie that I, Death Becomes Her, if you remember that one, that's the first movie that pops to my mind. I know, she, I mean, she's been doing it for, for years and years. The last one I saw was that one she did with Amy Schumer called Snatched. Where no, I haven't seen that one. It's just, it's a funny, every, think about any, any funny movie you've seen that ha, it's just, it's, it's been made before. It's, there's, it's just cool. You know, I it's think like, every movie has been made yeah, before it's by just, now. It just says some jokes, they go on adventure and it's, it's not that hard to follow. It's just a comedy. Uh, let's see here. I see. So today is April 1st. It's April fool's day. And one of the, this, I mean, I grew up with this thing. <clears throat> the pirate parrot debuted today in 1979. Can't be the only mascot that ever debuted on April the 1st, right? Uh, the parrot then was thin. And, and then I guess about what, seven or eight years ago, Stop you, smoking cigarettes. Mascots are supposed to be heavy set, or at least that's the way that I that I view them. Um, and so, happy birthday to the pirate parrot! I never got in that costume, but I did work for the parrot one one game when I was an intern for the pirates. I would have been nineteen years old, so that's ninety six. And he conscripted me to. Do you remember the Macarena? Yeah. The Macarena dance was was just crazy then. And the guy that made the pirate parrot actually built another costume that looked like the Tasmanian devil from Warner Brothers cartoons, from the Looney Tunes cartoons. And and I got in that costume that night as the Macarena monster. This was a Friday night against the Cubs. My job normally was to sit in the press box and just type into a computer everything that happened in the game. Or I would work stats for some TV crew, the Phillies or the Dodgers or the Expos or whomever. Well, that day, I didn't have to actually sit there and, you know, watch the game, which is really what I wanted to do. But the parrot guy asked me if I would help him out with this routine. So I dressed up as the Macarena monster for an entire game. My job, 
was dancing the Macarena with anybody that would dance it with me and even those who wouldn't. Because I think at that point, <laughs> people were kind of sick and tired of the, of the song. But he had me up on the dugout after the seventh inning stretch, leading the Macarena with 25,000 people at Three Rivers Stadium. And I was all into it, man. I'm like, this is the biggest crowd I've ever performed in front of, and there won't ever be a bigger one than this. Next thing I know, and he didn't tell me he was going to do this, the parrot bum rushes me from the side of the dugout and literally beat the living snot out in, uh, of me in front of all those people. I mean, he drop kicked me. He elbow dropped me. He clotheslined me. He even had a couple of fake paramedics there to help him out. When I fell off the dugout and they dragged me up, up, uh, up the stairs to the to the uh, well, I guess it was going to it felt like I needed to go to an emergency room because I had like every single well, not every single, but most of the body bodily fluids were kind of coming out of my nose and my mouth. I was he didn't tell me he was going to beat the crap out of me. And then he did. Nobody messes with a dancing parrot when they're in the middle of a funky groove. I no mean, what, kidding. Oh, my goodness. What is wrong with this guy for doing that kind of stuff? Meanwhile, we've got a baseball team at Arkansas that has three or four mascots. <laughs> we've got. We've got what Suey. We've got uh, pork chop. We've got Arby. We got Ribby. You got pork chop. Yeah, and Ribby's always there in front of us, leading. Take me out to the ball game with the bat. So I don't know of any other program in the in the SEC that has more mascots than the Razorbacks do, and that's not counting uh, the next version of uh, of the Living Razorback. Uh, you, you can't count that one yet. I mean, we're still working on on uh, on getting one. <laughs> They still get on top of the dugout there at uh, at Baum, Baumwalker. Oh yeah, that's still allowed. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, now I mean, now it's been it's been a few years that the dugouts have been netted. So you, if if you're dancing on the dugout, you're you're perfectly okay. You're perfectly safe. I wasn't allowed on the Pirates dugout during the game because I could have gotten smacked by a line drive, but. But the idea that if I blew into this little hose that was there in front of my mouth, I mean, literally, the pirate constructed this costume. He, he put a little, a little hose in to where your mouth is so that if you ever wanted to, you could blow into the nose and party favors would shoot out of your ears. I mean, it probably is the coolest outfit I've ever worn. I've never really been a, fashion, a fashionista or anything, but hey, how many of you out there could ever say that when you blew something out of your mouth, you had party favor shoot out of your ears? Who's the, uh, the mascot for the Denver Nuggets? Uh, Rocky? Uh, Is that his name? I don't know. Well, I was just guessing the Rocky Mountains. But makes sense. Yeah, they, um, the, the, the coolest thing, that so it's a little different, I guess. The Macarena is cool, not taking anything away from that, but when they jump on the trampoline and do the flips and dunk at the halftime show, that, that'd that be a pretty cool job, too. I remember the first guy that did that, I think, was the Phoenix Suns Gorilla. The Gorilla. Where is he? That's the best mask. That was one of the best mascots right there. It, they don't they don't have the Gorilla anymore because he wear the shooter shirt. It would be like a, the button-up shooter shirt instead of the jersey. But, yeah, he was, he was free-falling. So one of the weirdest things I'd ever seen was also the same year, and <clears throat> they were celebrating – the parrot's birthday, but it wasn't April 1st, which should have been the day that they do it. And they were able to invite all the mascots that didn't have a home game in Major League Baseball that day, at least those that were close enough to Pittsburgh where it wouldn't take them, you know, three, two, two or three flights to get there. And it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen because they had Billy the Marlin, they had Mr. Met, they had whatever the Tiger's name is. The Yankees don't have a mascot. The Red Sox don't have a mascot. Those are two franchises that don't need them you had a uh, few of the others slider from the from the cleveland indians then and the astro and all these goofy looking people and all the and uh, the weirdest thing was after the game we all went out i'm 19 yes i had a fake id we went out to the clark bar and grill and all of the mascots looked like all of the humans that played the mascot they all at least a little bit looked like their character like Mr. Met had this giant head. Um, the parrot, he didn't have wings, but he sort of looked like he had a bit of a beak that was maybe broken a little bit. The um, the guy who played Billy the Marlin, you should have seen the honker on this guy. He was big. I, I mean, you, you shouldn't have to look like the mascot when you play the part, but I guess that might have actually, Dirt. they might have needed, uh, hey, we need your headshot so that you actually look like the part you're playing. Yeah, they're all method actors. <laughs> Just get into character. That's exactly right. 
Now, Matt, I've been a mascot for, let's see, I've been bleacher, I've been the bleacher creature. I haven't done mascot things in a long time, thanks to this radio show and doing Razorback games. When you work in the minor leagues, you're going to have to wear the furry suit at some point. So I've been, the I've, first I was my high school mascot. I was the Alder Dice Dragon. Uh, I was the bleacher creature. I was Orbit the Space Cat. I was Brewinkle the Moose. Augie the Dinosaur. I was the voice of the Ogden Raptors, and I did dress up as Augie the Dinosaur. Not for games, but for a couple of school appearances. I was the Mighty Casey in California. You should be proud of me for this, Matt. Um, University of Pacific is in Stockton, where the Mudville Nine played. And at, a, at halftime of a basketball game, we had a mascot basketball game with a ball that was not inflated all the way. And I'm wearing the Mighty Casey costume, got size 13 shoes, and I scored the only bucket in that entire mascot game and then fell on my face for the, the rest of the entire thing. Um, I, did, I was Shelly the horse for some appearances, never games with the Travelers, but for some appearances I did that. And then here's one that you would have never expected. <clears throat> I guess this was 2003. You remember the state quarters that were manufactured by the U.S. Mint? Mm -hmm. And those were all debuted like one year after the other. When the Arkansas quarter debuted, they debuted the quarter at the, the, um, crater, the crater mines, uh, the diamond mine in Murfreesboro. Now, I, by then, I'd written an article for Minor League Baseball's website that detailed about all the different mascots I'd been up until then. So I get a phone call from the United States Mint at the Traveler's Ballpark. And I don't remember the lady's name, but she says, we saw your article online and wondered if maybe you knew somebody that could be the mascot for the U.S. Mint, which is Peter the Mint Eagle. Looks like Benjamin Franklin in an eagle costume. I mean, had the pince nez on the beak and everything. And I'm like, well, all right, where are we? Where is this happening? So I can tell this person where it would be and I'll find somebody for you, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. And what is this? What does it pay? It pays three hundred and fifty dollars. I got your Peter the Mint Eagle right here. I just gotta I just gotta know what the temperature is, Phil, because I've been in one of those suits before, uh, raising money for a seventh grade AAU tournament. You kinda had to wear a suit and do do your thing like you're talking about. What suit did you fit if, into? If it's uh well, you know, I was five eight in in the seventh grade, so I was I was a normal human size then. Um but the, it's hot. Like you're sweating. If you if you get in that thing and it's hot outside, there's no AC in there. I mean, it's a it's a sauna. As soon it's it it can be miserable. After about twelve minutes, it's like oh somebody tagged some somebody else go. It's disgusting to put it. Ah. yeah, yeah. Because I'll tell you when that quarter was debuted, it would have been like May or June, in the middle of the day in Murfreesboro, Arkansas, by the mine. I mean, that's already hot going over mm. there. And let me tell you what it feels like on July 4th, 1997, with 11,000 people at a double-A ballpark in Akron, Ohio, and you don't have a bodyguard with you, and you're just walking around the ballpark by yourself. Literally, kids are kicking me in the ass. Um, you got other kids that pulled my tail off. I'm Orbit the Space Cat. They pull my tail off, and I look over, and I'm like, what are you? At that point, I broke the third wall. You're not supposed to ever speak. The mascots don't talk. The only mascot that talks is the San Diego chicken, and he talks with a high pitch. That's his thing. He's the only one who talks. At that point, I backed those kids up into the wall. Orbit the Space Cat had some words for these kids. Give me that tail back, you miserable little 877-377-6963 <clears throat> for calls and texts on a McClarty Daniel hotline. Uh, let's take a break. We'll get to the sports that don't involve, you know, wearing a furry suit in just a moment. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swung on, skied in the left. That ball's hit pretty well, and it's gone. Brett Eibner's hit a home run, and the ball game's tied. Brett Eibner has hit a home run, and the ball game is tied. The Razorbacks down to their final out, and Eibner, for all his troubles this season, has just saved things. Listen to every Razorback baseball game on ESPN 95.3 and hitthatline.com. At Southern Tire Mart, we look out for you and your vehicle. Come visit us for America's most trusted brands like Michelin Tires and top-of-the-line service. 
you can depend on Southern Tire Mart and Michelin Tires to keep you rolling. Come see us at Southern Tire Mart, just off I-540, exit 14 in Fort Smith, for Michelin Tires that fit your needs and service that cares for you like family. Come on along, head for the mountains of Bush. Head for the mountains, it's cold and it's smooth and it's waiting for you. Come on, head for the mountains of Bush. Head for the mountains of Bush. Head for the mountains of Bush. Life be. Enjoy responsibly. Copyright 2022. Anna Bush, Bush, and Bush Life Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Bet Saracen is Arkansas's number one mobile app for placing sports wagers. There's big news in the mobile sports betting business. Bet Saracen was just named the 15th largest sports book in America. That's because Arkansans like to do business with a winner. Find all your winners on Bet Saracen. Download it today and look for my double R prop bet specials. I pick them, you win them. Bet Saracen is Arkansas's favorite sports wagering app. Gambling problem? Call 800 522 4700. Regardless of one's age, there's a living heritage, experiences, and memories to share. Show how much you care by remembering elderly family members, friends, or neighbors by helping with chores, shopping, or a simple visit. Learn about life from the most experienced people in the world and make a difference in their everyday lives. This message is courtesy of our good friends at Paris Health and Rehab, 1414 South Elm Street in Paris, Arkansas. Contact Administrator Sarah for a tour today. She and her staff care about our seniors. Did you get us switched over to shelter insurance? Actually, I found a deal online. You did? Does your deal come with award-winning customer service? Oh, not sure. Does the deal include a local agent? Doesn't actually say. Can we create a customized plan that fits our needs? Let's just call the local shelter agent. For insurance that fits just right, find a shelter agent near you. See Agent Randy Milam in Alma or Agent Brandon Zimmerman in Barley. Precision Overhead Door features the finest quality materials, installation, and service for all of your overhead door needs. Fully licensed and insured with locations in Rogers and Fort Smith. Serving all of Northwest Arkansas and the River Valley. Give them a call today at 844-PBS-DOOR or online at PrecisionDoorNWA.com. Back-to-back winners of the Best of Award, Gold Best Garage Company in Northwest Arkansas, and also winners of the River Valley Precision Overhead Door. We all know breakfast is an important part of your day, but sometimes when you're traveling for business, you end up staying at a hotel that doesn't offer any. You know what happens? You grab a cup of coffee and skip the meal entirely. We've all been there. But if you book a room at La Quinta by Wyndham, you can enjoy their free bright side breakfast featuring delicious baked goods, fruit, eggs, yogurt, and waffles. And really, who doesn't want to start their day with a fresh hot waffle? Tonight, La Quinta, tomorrow you shine. Book direct at LQ.com. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 95.3. We get some rules to follow. Find halftime on 99.5 in Northwest Arkansas, 95.3 in Fort Smith and the River Valley, 96.3 in Hot Springs in Central Arkansas, 104.3 in Harrison and Mountain Home, and everywhere on HitThatLine.com. Join the conversation. Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now back to the hosts. Here's Phil Elson and Matt Jones. 64-yard try for the lead. Good snap. Good hold. Line drive kick. And it is good. That is Jake Bates, former Razorback, kicking a 64-yard field goal. 
for the Michigan Panthers to pick up victory in the uh, United Football League. Heck Bates, yeah. He never kicked a field goal at Arkansas, at least not in a game. I'm sure he kicked plenty in practices and whatnot, but he was the uh, kickoff specialist. And he was an all-SEC guy for being a kickoff specialist in 2022. But uh, it seems he can kick it through the uprights as well. Hey, I'll say this. And th- I would feel differently about maybe any other position in the sport of football. If you can kick a 64-yarder in the UFL, you can kick a 64-yarder in the NFL. It's very true. It, it seems like his thing is probably his accuracy. Um, and it's, but 64 yards, man, that's a, that's a bomb. That's Steph Curry range. It looked like he had some room to spare too. Mm. Even, um, that's your boy. Um, well, who was our kicker last year? Cam little cam dude. I, I still think he's going to get drafted. I don't know what all the, I, all you hear about is there's going to be six quarterbacks taken in the first round or, you know, uh, your, your boy McCarthy's moving up. Bo Nix is going to be a first. I'm like, if somebody takes Bo Nix in the first round, whoo. Not only not only is it Knicks in the first round, but you know potentially top ten. It's 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 uh. You may ha- have like five quarterbacks drafted in the top ten. That's what uh the the they they were talking about for sure that there's going to be four quarterbacks taken in the first round and and that's the way it goes. You get that extra year. Uh, you see what Pittsburgh was able to do. They they were able to go get Chicago Bears quarterback. What was he there two years? So that he's going in on his third year now. So you get him, you still get him on that rookie deal. Michael Penix Jr. last week, uh, let's see, through 75-yarder, posted a sub-4-6 in the 40-yard dash. He says he's a 4-4 guy himself, in his opinion, but you can say you're a 4-4 guy, but if they if they got you clocked at 4-5-9, at, at well, you're not that's quite a 4-4 guy. Electronic 4-5-9 could be a handheld 4-4-8. That's, that's something that could be. So it's it's like when you go to camp, everybody says, you know, I, what, what you run a 4-4. And I wouldn't say everybody says they got a 40-inch vertical. But at most people, you know, they, they got over a 30-inch vertical when they, when, they, when they say it to you. You're like, yeah, I run a 4-4. And then they, they go run a 4-5-9. See, Mike Tannenbaum on ESPN thinks that the first four picks, the first four will be quarterbacks. None of them can be a sure thing. I mean, we've gotten into this quite a bit. I mean, he's looking at Williams, May, Daniels, and McCarthy as the top four picks, and he thinks Arizona would draft J.J. McCarthy while they have Kyler Murray. Man, you know, I'm I'm scared uh, of taking McCarthy. There was uh, there was a couple games for for Michigan, and I get it. That's their that's what they do. Uh, they run the football, but you're telling me one score games and and they ru- they ran it 31 straight times and didn't throw it once. I, I just I, I don't know how talented. I thought he needed another year of college ball. I know you won the national championship. You were playing on the best team, and then your coach leaves. What a better way to prove that that you're a number one overall type of pick is coming back to school and doing your thing. I I just don't think he's ready. I, I I'm so so surprised, Phil, that. Drake Mays considered the third. You know, it's it's Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels are one two, and the, and a lot of people are they're talking. It only takes one. A lot of people are talking about how Jaden Daniels should be the number one overall pick. It's just it's like you feel you got to draft a quarterback in some situations, right? I just, I just, uh, like I can I can see the idea behind uh, behind the Bears drafting Caleb Williams. Uh, or or Washington going after a quarterback. Uh, but if you've drafted – look, and I understand too, I mean, Kyler Murray, is he ever going to be able to play a full season? That's that's the aspect of it. You want to you feel pretty good about the guy who's behind you, and we, we see time and time again reasons why. you got to have a second quarterback that that isn't just there to hold a clipboard, that if he does have to get into the game, you want him to be able to not lose a game for you. I don't know the situation with Arizona as far as that's concerned, but I think uh, – you know, drafting a first rounder, maybe that makes him feel a little bit better about that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we had a caller and uh, not there any longer. Got another text. How about the Pirates? Four and zero. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm impressed. But uh, remember, I think they were like twenty and I think they had the best record in Major League Baseball after April last year. I think it was twenty and six. They could and be this year's Baltimore Orioles. They could be this. They could be this year's Pittsburgh Pirates. You know, have a great month of April, and then you know you get. 
five other months you got to worry about. <laughs> like nobody wins. Nobody, nobody has, nobody has a great season based upon what happened in April. There's, there's all kinds of stories of, and proof of players and teams having a hot month of April, but then kind of being shown that baseball's not a one month sport. Uh, unless until you get to October, then it's a one month sport. But by then, you know, you kind of, you kind of have a sense of who you are. Nobody knows what they are after one month, not in major league baseball, not in minor league baseball, and certainly not in college baseball. When, uh, when, when, so the top two picks you said were LSU Tigers, uh, how, how far away are they? Cause in an NBA, the same thing with like Anthony Black, Brandon, Brandon, uh, Miller, uh, Nick Smith, some, it takes them a while. It, sometimes it takes you, even if you're a top pick or a lottery pick, it takes a while before you, you're in a starting rotation or before you're playing mean, meaningful minutes. What's up with Paul Skeens and, and, uh, are any of them playing yet? Are they, have they been called up yet? Skeens could be in the big leagues right now, but the Pirates have to tr- control For his. For money wise, you wait a while, right? It's just money. Okay. Otherwise, I think he'd be ready. Okay. And we'd be there now, but I can't, I imagine he'll get up at some point in, I don't remember when the date is for when the clock starts over, but it would be late May, early June. He probably comes up. Texas brought up their first round pick from last year. Wyatt Langford was the center fielder for, uh, the Florida Gators. He's he has started this year in the big leagues. Nice for the for the World Series champion too. You would think you'd you'd start in the big leagues if they if you need somebody to just sort you of play for the A's. duty. Yeah, right. But it, I mean that says something about he is a he's really I think he's an advanced hitter. You know, coming out of college and coming out of the SEC. Um, and and I think Skeens is too. His his is I think a lot about stuff, but also he knows what he's doing. We, we we don't talk as much uh, about baseball. I mean, so 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 basketball field. The basketballs are different from from college to the NBA. Football is the same thing. How much difference? The 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 main difference I think about is in what you're talking about is a guy hitting an aluminum bat going to a wood bat. But how much difference is the baseball? Uh, can, so these pitchers to have control and have movement. Uh, I, I didn't even think. You know how how similar are they? You know, are the seams the are they raised to the same or are they? Are the, you you're know, asking the, you're asking a person who's got a whole bunch of baseballs right here to actually take a look at. So I've got a major league ball. I think this. I don't remember when this is. Do from, they weigh the same? Yeah. Well, they're going to weigh a little differently now, just sitting around. I got a major league ball. I got a Texas league ball, and I have a college ball right here in front of me. The major league balls seams are lower. Mm-hmm. You notice it just by looking at the baseball. When you feel it, you can definitely. So your feel grip, it. it's going to be a little harder to grip. Yes, um, and like when a major league pitcher goes to minor league baseball to pitch a rehab game, then that guy is allowed to use a major league ball in the minor league game. Otherwise, they're using it. They are. They're using a little bit of a different ball, but it's enough to make a difference. The college ball has bigger seams, and I think they're even a little bigger and a little more higher than the minor league ball. So that means you'll get, I mean, that's more wind resistance um, for the ball to Less break, spin. for it to spin. Yeah. That's right. And and therefore, it, it should also travel just a little bit less. I think the weight is generally about the same. But there's such minuscule differences. Like when you pick up, for anybody that, that, that doesn't – for, like, pitchers and, and, and infielders, they can tell a difference the moment they hold on to a ball. Um, for people that don't hold a baseball all the time, I think a lot of times the first time you grip it, it'll feel the same. But for a football, Matt, like, there's a noticeable difference between the college football and the NFL football. No, no question about it, and that that was the thing because you might be sponsored by Adidas. You might be sponsored by Under Armour. Uh, you, you know, you're going to have a different – and same thing with basketball. One of the things that uh, I remember when playing for the Hogs, whatever team we were playing that week, they had their own basketball when you were traveling. So that was the ball that got put into rotation uh, for your couple days of practice. Now, I'm wondering, the, and I'm I'm assuming uh, in the NCAA tournament, they they probably use the same. The it's got to just be NCAA balls. It's it's it's. But when you go to somebody's home floor, they get to use the ball of their choice. Yeah. Right. And in football, in the NFL, don't teams travel with their own ball? Mm-hmm. They do. Mm-hmm. Baseball, you got to use the ball that the but, home but team NBA, gives you. and then that's that's what NBA and and, and NFL. It's the same brand. It's mm-hmm. the same. It's just kind of how you doctor it up. Well, we use Rollings baseballs in, in every aspect of the sport. Um, the here's a difference in the college ball to the other ones. There's no autograph. 
Now, I don't know if the Texas League ball has the autograph of the league president anymore because you don't have league presidents any, any longer. Maybe it's just um, Manfred's autograph on there. But otherwise, who would, who would you like to get for the NCAA autograph? You want to get a Charlie Baker autograph on the NCAA ball? Doesn't that sound really exciting? The Mark Emmert balls, um, you got to actually pay somebody to take it from you. 877-377-6963 for calls and texts on a McClarty Daniel hotline. As we get to the Final Four this weekend, make sure that you redo your picks on the HitThatLine.com Bracket Challenge presented by On The Mark Sports Bar and Grill in Fayetteville, 810 Billiards and Bowling in Fort Smith, and Shelter Insurance agent Chris Dooley. We did this at the round of 64. We redid it at the round of 16. And now with the Final Four, make sure you get those picks back in. Compare your picks to everybody else's, and we have winners that get prizes for the entire round and for the final four picks. That is online at hitthatline.com. See Bracket Challenge, top of the page. Click it, leave your picks. It is that simple. Stay tuned. Halftime is back in just a moment for the home stretch. You can now download our new app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Listen anytime and anywhere on your favorite mobile device. Just search Hit That Line now. At Red River Dodge, not only do we have new vehicles, but we also have top quality pre-owned, all the way from your big rig trucks to your luxury class SUVs. Are you needing to trade in a used vehicle? That's no problem. Here at Red River Dodge, we give top dollar for your trade-in. Whatever it is you're needing, here at Red River Dodge, we have it. Give us a call today at 501-362-5831 or visit us on the web at redriverdodge.com. And don't forget, folks, we deliver. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Charles Barkley in a pickup game. We'll take Barkley. Ha! First pick! Sorry, kids! Yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? Okay, here's the plan. Pass me the ball every time. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One and a member FDIC. You're listening to Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Center Studios. Crabtree RV Center, where RVing is life. Riley Farm Dental, at the entrance to Riley Farms, provides every type of dental care and procedure for you and your family, from general dentistry, braces, implants, and cosmetics. Dr. Sparkman, Davis, and Farmer give all of their patients better lives with a better smile, more confident, and a comfortable experience every time. Riley Farm Dental, 5901 Riley Park Drive, Suite A, at the entrance to Riley Farms. Now offering same-day crowns. Call 226-3500 for an appointment or visit RileyFarmDental.com. What's on your to-do list today? Does it include looking for a new piece of heavy equipment? If so, come by and see us at Sharp Equipment today and explore our latest offers and deals as a Wacker Newson dealer. Whatever your day brings, whatever job it is you need to complete, Wacker Newson Equipment is up to the task, and Sharp Equipment is here to help. Stop in Central Hydraulics and see us at Sharp Equipment, located at 6104 Highway 271 South in Fort Smith, or give us a call at 479-242-1406. Why do people love Shamrock Liquor Warehouse? Simple. They've got it all. 70 years in business, 15,000 square feet of choices. They buy in volume so you can save. What else? How about the largest selection of well, everything? Shamrock's got it. Special orders? Shamrock's got it. Convenient drive through open six days a week? Shamrock's got it. Need a keg for your party? Shamrock's got it. Load up at Shamrock Liquor Warehouse at the corner of Midland and Riverfront Drive in Fort Smith. I know we're always on the go heading to Fayetteville, Little Rock, Oklahoma City, and you need a place to fill up. But not just for gas. I need snacks, drinks, and a restroom that doesn't make me throw up. That's why my new favorite pit stop is Jam Mart Number 10, located at 6201 Grand Avenue on the way out of town. I can't stop by without getting something from their hot box or a fresh made burger. That's Jam Mart Number 10, located at 6201 Grand Avenue in Fort Smith. Arkansas Fuel Injection in Fort Smith has been providing quality work for all new and rebuilt diesel pumps and injectors for over 25 years. They are a certified diesel shop with a team of quality technicians that ensure the highest quality worksmanship and warranties all their work. They are open Monday through Friday 8 to 5 and has emergency service available 24 hours a day. For all your diesel pump, fuel injection, and parts needs, stop by Arkansas Fuel Injection, 6300 South 29th Street, Fort Smith. Call them today at 1-800-817-7709. Arkansas. Fuel injection. 
Do you need gutters, but think they're too expensive or that you need to get the soffit or fascia ready? No worries. Call the gutter guy. He does it all. No need to call multiple companies to get the right gutters for your home. Call the gutter guy. Quality, low maintenance, leaf free gutters with a five year warranty. The gutter guy also does vinyl siding and windows. The gutter guy. Over 30 years experience. Call 226 1259. Call the gutter guy. Your home for every Razorback football, basketball, and baseball game. ESPN 953. <laughs> You're listening to Halftime with Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Want to jump in the conversation? Call or text ESPN Arkansas on the McClarty Daniel Hotline, 877-377-6963. Now, here's Phil Elson and Matt Jones. Big women's basketball games tonight. Elite 8, 6 o'clock ESPN, LSU, and Iowa. 8 o'clock, UConn and Southern California. I think UConn only has like six players available. Uh, LSU and Iowa are first. Iowa is the favorite on Bet Sarazen by one and a half, minus 130 on the money line. And they've got UConn as the favorite against Southern California, uh, minus 175. They already have odds out for the first uh, side of the women's final four with NC State and South Carolina. Carolina is favored by 11 and a half. Uh, any of those odds uh, are all available on Bet Sarazen, Arkansas's favorite sports betting app. And as we get into April, of course, the Masters is coming up very shortly. Major League Baseball regular season is in full swing. All the best app, all the best odds, all the best props are available on your Bet Sarazen app. It works for Android users. Just download. Uh, On the Google Play Store, any Apple users got the App Store and all the web browsers work as well, betsarazin.com. You got to be inside the state of Arkansas in order to use Betsarazin. Two uh, firings in college basketball of note. One on the men's side. Well, not a firing. It's a hiring. SMU has hired Andy Enfield, away replacing Rob Lanier. So, that's uh, that's kind of that's that's bringing in a guy who was semi-successful at USC, then never had any kind of a run in in uh, in March, but he had a he had a nice program going on there with uh, with USC. I still say for SMU as they elevate themselves to a more higher profile athletic department, that ACC that they're in right now is not the ACC that they're going to be in in the next two years. So I don't know how much of a higher profile they'll have leaving the American for a league that I think is destined to become somewhat like the American. I think the SMU just, I think they're happy to be there. Uh, you see some of these other smaller schools when they, when they kind of get into the big time, it takes them two years for they can play postseason play. Uh, SMU is allowed to play postseason play. Uh, I think they're, if there's ever been a school just happy to be invited to, to have a seat at the table, I, I think SMU is happy to be there. Now, Southern California's women's team trying to get to the Final Four tonight against UConn. UConn is the brand name in women's college basketball now. Uh, I'd I'd put South Carolina up there, too, and I'd put LSU up there, too, but no one's won any more championships than UConn. Uh, The other big news was Tennessee women's basketball parting ways with Kelly Harper after six years and never advancing past the Sweet 16. USC was brand, as brand name as it got for women's college basketball. 
with Cheryl Miller, and they won back-to-back championships uh, in 83 and 84. And so that's kind of a return to greatness for this program. It happens to be the same year that NC State finally gets back to the Final Four for the first time since their huge upset victory and Jim Valvano running around looking for everybody. You know, and I, I, if you're like looking for, if you want the Cinderella to root for, you've got the Cinderella right there in, in NC State. Just look at, just look at, it, look at just the school and their athletic department compared to the other ones that they are literally right there next to. Uh, Wake Forest is m- is more of a forgotten program than NC State. But if I'm talking about the ACC, Matt, usually Clemson wants out, Florida State wants out, eventually North Carolina wants out. NC State is a huge school and and a very big athletics department. I mean that would be that would be a, a very attractive uh, athletic department, I think, for for some school for for one of the two big leagues to try to get to. But they're also totally an afterthought uh, in in that area behind UNC and behind Duke. I wonder what what schools will come to the SEC and then what's going to go to the Big Ten. You know, Florida State, it, it just feels like SEC. Uh, Clemson, does that feel like SEC to you? It or, does. Yeah, yeah. NC State, to me, maybe maybe Big Ten, maybe. North Carolina big, feels Big Ten. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Miami, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's a part of it. You're looking at the geography of this and also thinking, will the Big Ten's geography eventually become a problem? If you're doing the coast-to-coast thing, if you have a having, having major leagues – uh, that have coast to coast leagues, four time zones. Well, how do they make that a little bit easier on these on these on these players and the teams? They divide them into conferences that are based on geography. You don't do that in Major League Baseball, but in Major League Baseball they have regional divisions. And these teams, I think, I think, I don't think they play as many. I think they play as many games against everybody else as they do in the division. So it doesn't play out quite the same way. But in the NFL, divisions based on geography. NHL, it's conferences east and west, same with the NBA. You know, the Big Ten, I mean, they're not doing divisions. Sooner or later, it's like the weight of this, of, of all this travel just seems like it won't work. I feel the same way about the ACC now, you know, bringing in the two California schools, Cal and Stanford and SMU. It's just, it's, it's just I, I can't see how this, can, how it continues. I would think that you would want, if you're playing UCLA, that you would want to play USC next. I mean, you'd want to, if you're going to making a West Coast trip, you find a way to do that. What, what, it doesn't the, the baseball team feel after the SEC uh, regular season game, don't they leave right away and, and go down and get ready for the SEC tournament? Like they're there a couple yes. of days early. Like you would, you would think if you got to play UCLA, hopefully you can fly out there and make it to play, play, play. Your, you just stay out there for another week. Same thing with those teams. If they come over, uh, in, in to the eastern seaboard, so to speak, then maybe they play a couple teams before they go back. Haven't they go I learned back west. about some NFL teams that have t- that that have two games out west, maybe one in Denver, then one in the Bay Area or something, and they just stay out there the entire week rather than fly back and forth. Um, it would make sense. Got a text in from Don in Fort Smith thinks SMU will eventually be an SEC school, and that I don't think that'll ever happen. Um, all the money that that SMU has. They have zero fans. Zero. They wouldn't be able to fill up a football stadium that is SEC size. SMU will never be a Southeastern Conference school. Never. If you're in the state of Texas and you're not in the SEC already, then it's not happening. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, the SEC has the Texas that they need. And, and that's part of the reason why SMU is not an SEC team. There are many more fans of both the Longhorns and the Aggies that reside around SMU's campus than SMU has fans inside the Metroplex. So you got to have fans, I think major fans, to be an SEC school. The only one that doesn't is Vanderbilt, and they've got the weight of history on their side of being in this league for, for, for however long, 70 years, 80 years, or whatever it is. But as far as SMU is concerned, all the donations in the world, all the NIL money in the world isn't going to change the fact that they're about number 12 or maybe 14 on the importance list in sports in their own drawing area, like inside the DFW area or just outside of it. There are probably 13 or 14 other things that sports fans care about ahead of SMU. 
You know, in in the Premier League, uh, when a, a team gets promoted, they have to have stadium has to be to capacity. You know, and 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 you brought that up about the SMU stadium. You know, I wonder seven thousand for 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 a game. Don't you think they'd have to be at least in the double digits to to be an SEC school? I think, and even just to be a Division One school, you got to be at a certain level. But right. I think in the SEC, it's like what's Vanderbilt Stadium is the smallest, and I think that's in the high 30,000 range, maybe low for it. I know they're redoing the stadium and renovating it, so maybe there are a few more seats for the visiting fans to sit in too, by the way. No, you don't want another one of those situations in the SEC. So they'll be fine in the ACC, and then whatever the next iteration of the ACC is, it'll I'm sure it'll work a little better for SMU than what they were doing, which was just kind of jumping around conference to conference for a while, just like UTEP did and uh, a lot of other ones too. A lot of other ones, too. Uh, all right, we can break and wrap things up in just a moment. Got any anything you want to get with us? We've got open time. And then in the final segment of halftime, 877-377-6963. We'll wrap things up right after this. The University of Arkansas will host the National Collegiate Women's Gymnastics Regional Championships inside Bud Walton Arena, April 3rd. This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Thanks for watching us here on ESPN Arkansas. Download the brand new Hit That Line Now app in the Apple and Google Play stores. ESPN Arkansas, more than just radio stations. Call or text the McClarty Daniel Hotline at 877-377-6963. McClarty Daniel, a vehicle for every lifestyle. When you're looking for a new car, you want to shop for a vehicle you love with an organization you trust. You've probably heard that McClarty Daniel means making deals, but what I'm inspired by the most is that McClarty Daniel means making a difference in our community. When you buy a vehicle with McClarty Daniel, you reinvest right here in the community, in our schools, in our little leagues, in our food banks, and our people. So you're not just making a purchase, you're making a difference too. Come see us at any of our six locations in Northwest Arkansas. Tommy Craft here. When it came time for new gates and some fence repairs at my home, the fence man was my first call. The fence man does it all, from large commercial jobs to small residential repairs. Wood privacy fence, vinyl fence, commercial or residential chain link, even custom wrought iron fencing. 479-782-3936. 18 months, same as cash financing with approved credit is now available. If it involves fencing, the fence man does it. The fence man. He ain't afraid of no work. 479-782-3936. It's a dandy white perch. Big old slab. C'est bon, Sakali. One beautiful crappie. It's a paper mouse. <laughs> Some serious crappie. Nice spec. We got crappie. They might go by different names, but all prefer the same thing. Bobby Garland, America's favorite. White perch, slab, Sakale, paper mouth, crappie, spec, crappie baits. I call it dinner. The tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contests out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up to the national championship. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile device and even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get in on all the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. Are you looking for the best Razorbacks insight and analysis? Hell yes. How about listening to an Arkansas football legend? Matt Jones. All he does is make big plays. What's the voice of the Hogs have to say? Hey, what a great crowd last night. Don't forget about the Omaha Hogs. The Hogs are going to Omaha. Matt Jones, Chuck Barrett, and Phil Elson, the best in the business. On the Hit That Line podcast network. Go to hitthatline.com or search Hit That Line wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Madonna has gone from like a virgin to like a surgeon. You can try to nip and tuck from the curse of sin, but eventually death is going to win. God will do major surgery on this sin-filled world, and when he does, people will try and hide their faces from him. Even plastic Christians won't be exempt. 
Look up Isaiah chapter 2 and see how the spiritual world renders this an immaterial world. I'm Pastor Abe from Woodland. Read about it. This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Thanks for watching us here. Welcome back into Halftime Live from the Crabtree RV Studios. Crabtree RV Center in Alma, where we make your dreams come true. I do remember now that the uh, Manic Monday is by the Bengals. And I've known this forever. It's just I always get the Bengals and the Go-Go's crossed up when it goes to the 80s music. Is it all right? Again, I mean, again, I'd go Belinda Carlisle over Susanna Hoffs, but that's probably being, that's probably just splitting hairs. Lips Incorporated. Funky Town. I don't know who the we'll have I don't, to get. We'll have to get I don't know who the tomorrow. lead singer of Lips I and Crystal was. Gale was she? <laughs> she in the eighties? Was she? No, 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 no. I'm saying she's an eighties. She's an eighties girl, right? Crystal Gale. I don't remember. Now I'm no. I know I've heard a song by Crystal Gale. What am I forgetting here? Oh, don't make it my brown. <laughs> don't it make my brown eyes blue? That's her song. I guess that's eighties. She was in. That's from seventy seven. But maybe okay. she would have been in the eighties okay. too. Yeah, Dan digs the uh, bubblegum 80s pop today. I have to get C Unit eventually to listen to one of these Casey Kasem episodes I listen to. If you're going to do like real halftime homework, it. it would be. It would be incredibly informative. Like the little note I dropped for you about about the uh, the Eagles starting it as Linda Ronstadt's um, as Linda Ronstadt's backup band, and they I never played for her not once because they were too good as the Eagles. They were already, yeah, they were already prime time. I uh, the, the the note that I'd heard, and and now this is a different dis, different format, but I love hearing notes like that. Was when Bob Dylan gave Huey Lewis and the News a song, wrote him a song, and said, "Hey, I want you all to record it." And Huey's like, "I got other things to do." And goes comes back to it later. He's like, "Man, when Dylan gives you something, you got to go record it." What was it I learned about Boston uh, yesterday? Listening to Casey Kasem, the show, the uh, more than yeah, a feeling, the, the band Boston. Uh, the lead singer, the guy who founded Boston, either worked in the U.S. post office or in a mail room. It's, re it's one of those real like rags to riches kind of stories. And then they turned into the band that everybody had a really hard opinion about. You either loved Boston or you despised Boston. Were they in Journey's category? Would that be kind of? Yeah, yeah. Would Chicago be in that same category, or are they a little, little more musical? Uh, probably a little more musical. Like, I, what did I see? Speaking of um, Rolling Stone. Uh, Kaysen was cut talking about the Rolling, uh, it was the Jan Wenner, I guess it was, that said about bands that would never make it on the cover of Rolling Stone. Journey was one of them. Uh, I think Boston was another. But if, yeah, it, it would be a, kind of in that category specifically. Journey never made it onto the cover of Rolling Stone, but I'm sure the Rolling Stones did. Now, I don't, I'm all right with Journey. Would I be here to tell you that it's the coolest band of all time? Maybe not. But hey, if if the soprano if the most famous scene maybe in TV history has Journey on it, I think they were doing something right. They had to have been doing something right. And Steve Perry, come on, never knew nobody quite quite sounded like Steve Perry. Uh, Billy from Hot Springs says Crystal Gale is Loretta Lynn's little sister. Mm. It's April first. I don't know what to believe. Mm. I, I don't know. Fair, what, fair I really enough. have no idea yeah. what to believe in, in as as far as that's concerned. And I do know about Waylon Jennings supposed to fly on the plane with, uh, with Richie Valens and the Big Bopper. JT sent that one in too. And Chris likes the Go Go's way better. Uh, I'm not making a I'm not making a value judgment on one group's music over the other. I was just saying that I might have, as a kid, had a little more of a thing for Belinda Carlisle than I did for Susanna Hoffs. But then again, that's like ten year old me. All these years later, I, I guess I probably feel the same way. 
Uh, all right, we got basketball tonight, Matt. Yeah, yeah, Casey does confirm this. Crystal Gale is Loretta Lynn's sister. Very good. Yeah, if it comes from everybody, like you kid, not everybody on the text line coordinated this this April Fool's joke, did you? Because you're oh. all, all you guys are not like simpatico. You don't all share the numbers and everything, so this has to be true now. Well, I'll tell you this. Um, I will definitely that that LSU Iowa game. It, it will be on. I'll, I'll try to get my eyes on that that sometime, especially, you know, if it starts at 6.15, uh, somewhere around 7, you know, maybe even have it on when it starts. But I do want to check out a little bit of that Iowa-LSU game. Well, I mean, it's a legitimate rivalry. Both teams are 28-4. and four. It's a legitimate rivalry of two players that seem to not like each other, but Reese says, we don't hate each other. It's just an on-court thing. It's just you step onto the court, I'm going to trash talk you. She trash talks as well. Clark, even last year after the championship game with the whole John Cena, you can't see me thing, and then pointed to the rink, she'd have done the very same thing. Like, I, this is kind of, when you look at this, and I think people are taking sides, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are really not that much different from each other. They're ballers, they play hard, they talk their trash, and that's what happens in basketball. And I don't think there's a, I don't view it as a value judgment one way or the other. I think it'll be a great game to watch. If I was picking uh, like WNBA, I, I'm taking Caitlin Clark over Angel Reese. Uh, if it, but Angel Reese is a top 10 pick in the WNBA. I mean, she, like you said, Phil, she's a stud and it could be based on need. Uh, but but Caitlin Clark is, yeah, she she's fun. That's halftime for your Monday here on ESPN Arkansas and hitthatline.com. Ruskin and Zach are standing by. They'll take you up until uh, until 7 o'clock. And uh, the Eastside Liquor Halftime Podcast will be ready for your download anytime now. And we're with you tomorrow for more award-winning halftime. For Matt Jones and for Christian, the C-Unit Johnston, I'm Phil. Thanks for listening today. That's halftime. Get up, get out, and get better. <laughs>